Hey, what's up, and welcome to Movie Dumpster Season 6, Episode 11. Today we're talking about Meet the Apple Gates from 1990, directed by Michael Lehman. I'm Joel Escola. I'm Sean Rourke. And I'm Mr. Lobo. Welcome to the Dumpster. Here we are, gents. Mr. Lobo is in the video dungeon. It's great. You this know, is amazing. No one ever talks about the smell of this place. What, is it, what does it smell like? It's like a musky, kind of basement-y kind of smell. I got a spoiler for you. Yeah? We're in a basement. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. That, oh. Ex mm. that explains Dungeon. That video <laughs> dungeon. But I'm, ex I'm excited. You have so many goodies, so many <laughs> movies, you know? Would you, what, what, would you, what were you scoping out before? I saw you looking around a little bit. I, I, mean, I, I mean, I was looking at the Godzilla stuff. I was looking at the Three Stooges stuff. I mean, I was looking at all the stuff. Mm, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's just it's just amazing. All these all these <laughs> pin back buttons. And then I, I, I saw like a bone, like a femur. <laughs> We don't. We're not, oh, we don't we aren't supposed to talk that. about oh, okay. that. Oh, okay. Ix Ixnay and the Umbe. Right, right. yeah. <laughs> that's uh, a different kind of dungeon okay. that's okay. over there. Uh, yeah, 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 right. yeah. Uh, no, but I'm glad to, to finally be here. I was on the audio version, you know. And, yes, and, you did uh, a sorority base and slime ball bolorama. Yeah. And for that, I was blindfolded, so I had no idea what it was. <laughs> But exactly. Now, the blindfold has come off and yeah. we're in the video version of it and it's it's amazing and I love all these colored lights, you know. Mm. I like this green stuff in your mouth. <laughs> it, it really uh it's all over the place. Exactly. Yeah, you yeah. got a little pink in your beard. Exactly. It's it uh, you know, lightens it, me up. It, it, literally. Yeah. You two look like you're mad at candy. <laughs> Have a lick. Well, I was going to say, don't take a bite, but okay. <laughs> it's so awesome uh, to finally have you here. I'm Long time coming. To yeah, this is great. I can't <laughs> wait. I'm glad you picked my favorite movie. Well, we're <laughs> talking about a, a, the, the, yes, the, the giant bug movie. Yeah. Actually a giant this time. Actually I will giant. say they are giant bugs. Not quite as big as them. Right. Right. A little bit smaller than them. Uh, not, and not as big as... Uh, um, the beginning of the end with Peter Graves, where right? They had giant locust uh, attacking Chicago. It's also not; they're not as big as the giant mantis either. Well, I was going to no. say they definitely are at least uh, related in some way, or you know, shape or form. Uh, the the bug people and fucking mimic. Oh, kind of, yeah. Maybe. Second cousins, maybe. Yeah, probably the cockroaches and the and the uh, what is that? What what are the bugs in that movie? The giant um, cockroach. No, I don't know. <laughs> they have a name. I. Don't remember, but uh, basically ask Mira the same Servino, thing. She knows. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, they're bigger than Judas, the, the Judas that, breed. That yes. Show Mantis with the superhero. Yes. They're, oh, they're okay. a little bigger than, than him. They're nice. He's in a wheelchair. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, before we get into it, uh, if you want some more Movie Dumpster content, you can head over to patreon.com slash movie dumpster. You can get an ad-free version of the show for just as little as $2 a month, and uh, maybe you could support the show. That'd be great. We'd really appreciate that. Great deal. And for no money at all, if you're watching this on YouTube, please like the video and subscribe. Share it with your friends. And if you're listening on your favorite podcast app, just uh, leave us that five stars and uh, meh, leave a review if you'd like. It really helps us grow this dumpster community. And, uh, you know, let's get some more folks in here, some more dumpster dwellers to join in on the uh mdu fun yeah man and don't forget if you want any updates you can go over to moviedumpsterpodcast.com or follow us at movie dumpster on all your favorite social media apps whatever it's x or threads or whatever the fuck's going on nowadays uh you know follow us on there and uh you can get all your updates what events we're at we're going to be at crypt video rentals soon uh for october so don't miss that one make sure you get your tickets now and uh yeah keep up with us and see what we're doing but yes meet the apple gates meet the Apple Gates. Or yeah. just the, the Apple, Apple Gates. Yeah, the Apple Gates. Mm -hmm. As it says on the VHS what right a here. Terrible title for a genre. <laughs> um I don't know what, what genre genre uh, would you would you say this is? Genre. <laughs> well, genre means style, right? What's the uh, style of this movie? A. A. I, I think <laughs> I think the thing is is okay, it's it's a comedy. It's this dark, dark. Dark comedy. We don't say black comedy anymore, right? We say I, dark comedy. Oh, yeah, I, I, guess say dark, so. I, can, I say black comedy. Uh, that, it, it, because comedy. people are going to think you're mistaking they'll, it for an Eddie Murphy they'll, movie. They'll think you're, yeah, you're uh, talking about yeah. Big Mama's House. Yes, right? guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but no, a, a dark comedy. Uh, uh, and I, I would also say it's kind of, it's got some sci fi elements. It's an FX movie, too. It's definitely mm -hmm. a science fiction, right? Yeah. yeah. And I would say an FX movie because mm -hmm. people don't realize that FX was a genre. Oh, like, yeah. You know, okay. people who, who in the 80s, the kids reading those magazines, and you were, we were one of those kids reading the magazines. Oh, yeah. About, Still am. Uh, uh, special effects. Everyone was trying to crack into 
How many effect shots can you have in your movie? How many? We I feel like they just go, oh, I can make bugs. OK, we'll write a whole movie around that. So <laughs> you're so, probably right. So I feel like uh, uh, FX is one thing. I, and, I, and I think the gross out factor of the movie, you know, it's got kind of like that weird uh, late 80s kind of, uh, um, you know, uh, movies like um, Ghoulies. And, yeah, we were talking know, a little bit about like Garbage Pail Kid garbage type pail stuff. Kids. Suburban were... Commando kind of comes to mind. Similar really? kind of comedy. Uh, uh, not yeah, as dark, I but silly suburban, as hell weird the stuff. the suburban aspect yes, of yes. it. They're living down the street um, from Christopher Lloyd. And I understand right. the Trojan horse idea is that they're, you know, they're yeah. they're among us. They're normal people. But wait, they're not normal. They're wow. really bugs. Right. They want to blow up a um, nuclear power plant. Power plant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I, you know, the Apple Gates is a weird is a weird name. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I, I did think about it a little bit, though, because we'll talk about we can talk about that later. Sure. You mentioned meet the Apple Gates or the Apple Gates. Yeah. Right. So when you pop this in or any time that I've seen, this has only been on tape yeah okay i used to rent this all the time as a kid when you watch the program it says the apple gates for the title card i'm not entirely sure why they changed it or shortened it to just the apple gates for I mean, the box for the box because it even says meet the apple gates on this promotional pin that i have yeah. and unlike every other because i have a bunch of posters for this movie are there other releases of this that say meet the apple gates are there other releases of this period because i feel like this movie was really hard to find this is only on tape and wait, it's on Laserdisc too. Okay. Um, and I'm not sure if there's. I'm sure there's a Japanese release okay. and like a Philippines release and and all that kind of. Because I had to watch this on YouTube, which yeah. I don't typically recommend. Not because I have anything against that, but it's just like the quality was a little low. Like it was like below VHS quality. I would argue. Re I, or, really? or maybe on par. Because I because I watched it on YouTube too, just to see if it was on there, and it was. I mean, look fine. Yeah. But uh, I yeah, actually prefer the my high... version See, too. I've okay, notoriously okay. seen bad copies of this too. Really, uh, kind oh, of really? like how Meet the Hollowheads is another Meet the movie. Yeah, I was actually uh, just looking at Hollow that Heads or Meet the Hollowhead, or actually it's like Life on the Edge or something mm. like that. Yes, is the other name yeah, is the other title. And then there's um, the Hollow Hollowheads, and where it has this reputation where people recorded it off of cable mm -hmm. or they had some weird fifth generation VHS dub of it, yeah. and that's what a lot of people saw. So um, I, I, it was interesting to see it uh, kind of hi-fi and to sort of really see how actually well-made it is. Oh, yeah. And, and uh, you know, we were talking about, like, I was thinking this is sort of akin to Beetlejuice a little bit where it's sort of adult but has a lot of kid appeal mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and has a lot of special effects. Um, and I think that, um, you know, you got the director of Heathers. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what a great movie, by the way. Just yeah. not, <laughs> not to cut you off there, but I couldn't believe that when I saw the list of movies this guy directed. And I was like, Airheads. Holy shit. Yeah. Uh, uh, and, and Hudson Hawk. Hudson Hawk. Hawk. Hudson right. Hawk. Which, uh, Hawk. was the next year after Applegate. Well, but what's interesting that's a is weird, that... funny movie that is just a lot of people don't like that. It's it's a lot of people consider one of the worst movies ever, but it's actually pretty funny. It's good with Bruce Willis and Danny Aiello. Yeah. This guy knows how to make a cult movie because oh, yeah. exactly. Heather's didn't make money initially, mm. but got a huge life on uh, tape. And and rentals. Yeah. Same thing. Meet Meet the Applegates did nothing. I, they spent five million dollars making Meet the Applegates. It made four hundred thousand bucks. <laughs> oh my god! At the box <laughs> office. And then I rented it every week <laughs> at the at the video store. Yeah. It made back a little money. Uh, and then again, then he followed that up with Hudson Hawk. Yeah. Right. So uh, you know that uh, this this the director was Michael what Michael Lehman. Or? Yeah. Michael yeah. Lehman. Michael Lehman. Uh, you know, uh, again, these are movies that, um, you know, what I call cult movie. Cult movie is a movie that people intellectually obsess over. Mm. Uh, a movie that people will proselytize. Have you seen this movie? Mm. Come to my house. I'm going to show this oh, to you. Oh, this is a have you seen this movie big time. Yeah. yeah. So I, I, I feel like the, those, those are kind of the earmarks of a cult movie. You have mm. to intellectually obsess about it and you have to watch it over and over again and you have to proselytize. I think those are like the three aspects yeah. of a cult movie. To that point, it's... We were talking like, how did this movie get made? Like every, it seems that every movie that Michael made was one of those types of movies. Like you said, Didn't so like money at the people box keep yeah. giving him money to do the art that he wants to make. He was the Zack Snyder of his yeah. <laughs> Where, Where's the Snyder cut? I, yeah. I think everyone can identify. <laughs> Lehman cut. I think people watch the movie and go, damn, this guy's good. Yeah. He can direct. Yeah. This is a good movie. So it's interesting that the industry... 
I think they let you roll the in those days. They yeah. would let you roll the dice for a five million dollar budget, which is maybe twelve million dollars today. Yeah, it, it for the studio, it wasn't that big of a risk. Well, Cinemark and and, and uh, New World, I think, produced this film, and New World was like on the way out. Now this is post Roger Corman. Roger Roger Corman sold New World Video in eighty three. Uh. And I think that the studio was in trouble, which is why this didn't get good distribution. And Probably a lot of too. Didn't see it, yeah, because or know what the hell it was, because it didn't really get a proper release until ninety one. You know, it was made in yeah. nineteen ninety, and so it, it was made in eighty eight. Oh, eighty eight. Yeah. Really? Yeah, eighty eight, eighty nine. It was shot. Huh. So like right after the Heather's. Okay. Okay. Um, and then it was released in ninety one. But it's interesting in the U S. It was released in nineteen ninety in the about Philippines. Movies like The Burbs. Yeah. yeah, parents, mm -hmm. right? These are movies that have the dark humor. They have this aspect of them that is satir satirical. This is the post Reagan era, yeah, right? Really, the yeah. nuclear family, you know, a, a, a good Christian, conservative values. I think Married with Children hit in '87. Yeah, you know, everyone was kind of back. There was this backlash against uh, these sort of traditional almost 50s sort of values family values yeah and i think that 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 movies like the apple gates was sort of a, a reaction to that mm -hmm. yeah flipping uh, it all on its head or what it, it or what it actually it, was or, or has it, become through the through the eyes of in this case bugs an ecological right. disaster Satire, movie kind of yeah just a couple quick things before we get into this because there's not that much behind the scenes that i could find which is interesting because mm. the i really love this movie so like i was thinking like I wonder if we could do a documentary about the making of this film because mm -hmm. there is nothing out there mm. real about even talking about this. And it's such a weird anomaly of a film. <laughs> it could be called Meet the Meet the Apple Gates. I was gonna, <laughs> no, no, maybe <laughs> The New Bugs on the Block, dude. New Bugs on the Block. Yeah, there you go. It could just be Meet Colon the Apple Gates. Mm -hmm. Yes. Or really confuse people. This <laughs> is Meet the Apple Gates, the movie. You've met the Apple Gates. Let's John Campapiano, <laughs> get on it. No, let's, we, let's, meet, let's do it together. I want to do it. <laughs> let's meet okay. the Apple Gates again. Yeah. <laughs> For real this time. <laughs> Talk to Ed Bagley. Uh, let's get him on the phone. Well, that's also true. Ed Bagley Jr. was great in this movie. Oh, he's fucking amazing and you I want to talk he, about an underrated actor and he oh, yeah. probably did it just for the ecological sort of yeah. message and the sort oh, yeah. of social aspects of it you know also the comedy too showed up on his electric, hilarious. His electric car yeah. and, <laughs> you know but he is hilarious and he yeah. did the same shtick in this that he did oh joe dante probably informed this a lot too you think yeah, so? yeah I, I, I can see yeah. kind of work the burbs yeah i feel like this kind of feels like a, like a, someone else trying to do a, a joe dante-esque movie some of the lighting too actually now that you mention it like it feels like that in a lot of spots he does the same bit in this that he does in amazon women on the moon which joe dante also worked on mm. Mm. With uh, there's this bit with Ed Bagley Jr. fully nude. Yes, <laughs> you were talking about as that. son of the Invisible Man, and he's just holding really? things in front of his crotch and running around nude, and and everyone in the bar is like, "Oh dear, it's the Invisible Man," and he's clearly not invisible at all, <laughs> oh and he's God. messing up their chess game and going, "How is this drink floating around?" And it's just a naked, <laughs> naked man in a bar yeah. in England somewhere. And 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 then the cops come in and they put the they put the Bobby puts his helmet over his crotch and they walk him out. <laughs> but Dead Bagley Jr. is just running loose in a nuclear power plant, fully nude. Oh, it's and great. nobody notices. No, no, oh my god, and it, they had the baby's day out vision. Oh, we'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> we got a spit take on oh, that one. Wow, got finally <laughs> everything. <laughs> Just real quick, a couple things. Uh, oh, that, that, that's what I was saying before. Like, there's not that much behind the scenes. Uh, David Newman's do, on score here. Mm -hmm. uh, he's done a ton of shit. And you wouldn't believe how many movies we've covered that he's done. You know, considering all the circus music in this, I wouldn't be the surprised. Fucking, here we go with the circus music. Do, 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 do. I was like doing it on my couch. I was like, da, 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 da. <laughs> oh, you were conducting. Yeah, well, a little again, bit. Denise Denovi produced Beetlejuice. I feel like Tim Burton was making Batman. Yeah. Let's get the Heather's guy to direct. Let's get some Burton-esque kind of beats in this movie. Yeah, I kind of. You think like David Newman's like a dime store Danny Elfman? Yeah, not even a dime store Danny, Danny Elfman. I... <laughs> 
Because I love. Okay, I, I love. I won't disparage him. No, 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 no. He's not a dime. He's a dollar store. <laughs> he's baby. a dollar okay. store. Okay, okay. You have I mean, to pay the full price. I, I'm kind of half joking about the circus music, even though there is a lot of it in this. It, it's fine. It works for the movie. It, it fits what they're going for. Okay, here's the bill. You ready? Sure. We got Critters. Okay. The Kindred. Right. My Demon Lover. <laughs> Both Bill and Ted movies. Wow. Yeah. Little Monsters. Okay. The Runestone. Jingle All the Way, The Beast Within. Wow, a lot of MD classics yeah. here. Wow. There's a lot of um a lot of variety than I would have to imagine. And there's he's done a shit ton of movies. Uh, I think Nundy Professor was one of them too, but like he's done like a bunch of stuff. But I th- I, I wanted to note some of those because we covered a lot of those. Oh movies. yeah, like well, the, eight the or score, nine of those. Is, yeah, the score is solid. Yeah, I for mean, sure, it the is. score is solid, and it gives a lot to it. It gives a lot to the material. One hundred percent. And you were talking about special effects, and like this is a special effects movie. We have one of the maestros, one of my favorite uh, effects guys, Kevin Yeager. I don't think we've even got to talk about Kevin Yeager yet on the show. Um, if we have, it's been a while. Yeah. And what did Kevin Yeager do? He is responsible for Chucky. He's the man who created oh, Chucky. Yeah. Um, and he did the uh, the Freddy makeup for the second movie, which is fantastic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, he's done a ton of the Crypt Keeper. Oh, really? Yeah. Kevin Keeper always had so much going on. Oh, yeah. Like, face yeah, yeah. Was always like, and then they did that home video release of the Crypt Keeper, and it's like the sad oh, hand puppet. The, the, the DVDs. The DVDs, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's that rough. Was, that was, that's and, rough to watch. And John Cassier's phoning that shit yeah, in. He's like, oh, oh yeah. you bought the DVD? Great. You sucker. I made five cents. <laughs> he or got whatever. his royalty check. Oh, yeah. gosh. I love John Cassier. I'm just busting jobs. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, but yeah, he's he's one of the best like ever. Now, do you think this is a situation where he had his creature shop and he's like, we can do bugs real good? Can we can we can we write this into your into a movie? Well, I'm curious because like this is '88, so he's like fresh off Child's Play. Wow. Well, and you and and you can't deny how big a hit. Um, the Fly with Jeff Goldblum. Yeah, that's that was oh, yeah. an enormously huge movie. <laughs> so you have be Jeff, afraid. Je- be very afraid. What? Jeff Goldblum turning into a fly and Ed Bagley turning into a mantis. Exactly. And where the fuck is that movie? It's like Saturday or got, Sunday the fifteenth. Yeah, you got a lar- yeah <laughs> Sunday the fifteenth. You got larvas being born in yeah. both movies. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Yeah, Gina Davis is popping it out. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I think I think that you know I think they were thinking okay you know people like this gross out kind of body horror mm. you can do this dark comedy a little bit of Beetlejuice a little bit of Heather's yeah. it'll be this you know it's only it's we only got five million in it <laughs> this is going to be a huge we're all we're all going to take vacations we're all going to give ourselves bonuses this is right be <laughs> in the bank the Adam Sandler formula. <laughs> We just we, we went and had a good time. Hey, it's gonna probably make money. What the hell? Let's do it. This movie's arguably better than anything Happy Madison has oh, sure, ever made. Sure, but I'm saying to Lobo's <laughs> point, you know they're having a good time, no matter how the movie turns out. Yeah. Stalker Channing is amazing. Oh right? my god. Oh god. There's so many. There's so many people in this, and I figured we'd go through oh, them yeah, like yeah, as we sure. get to because Dabney Coleman's in this, and, Coleman. and he's fucking hilarious. Yes. Really, for Aunt B. Aunt B. Aunt B. The oh, Queen. Doesn't your uh, your passport say that you're a female? You got a problem with that, pal? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got a problem with that. <laughs> Going to Rio, amigo. We'll get to it. <laughs> so uh, we love letting the guest plot crunch the film. Oh boy, we're doing something. I want to yes. do something a little special, okay. though. All right. So instead of telling us exactly what the movie's about, I would like you to it's read about people bugs. <laughs> I want you to read. The opening crawl for this okay. movie because it had well not a crawl but like the opening card. I mean, it's a crawl. It's Come a, on, well, the bugs. It's well, a crawl. Well, yeah, but a it doesn't. Crawl, it doesn't a bug crawl. <laughs> it doesn't move. It was a galactic civil war. <laughs> Wait a second, that's Starship Troopers. <laughs> <laughs> Hence the bugs. <laughs> want to know more? But I also want to mention. I wanted to mention the fact that you also uh, read uh, the Texas crawl, Chainsaw the Chainsaw Massacre, the Texas oh, yeah. Chainsaw Massacre crawl for our uh, Texas Chainsaw oh, that Massacre, was brutal. The, the Next Generation that was brutal. episode. No one sounds like Jean Larroquette, and, and I tried so hard to give it a little Jean Jean Larroquette business. You did fantastic. Mm-hmm. I remember that. Bless I, I want to tell that story because I love these boys are so good to me. <laughs> I want to tell that story because Mr. Lobo was. You're gonna bring my pudding cup later. <laughs> I hope so. It's in the freezer. Oh, goody. <laughs> it's getting nice we got cold. one of those wooden sticks oh. for you and everything. I wanted to tell that story because, like, I remember you texting me or calling me the day after, and you were like, you're like, oh, my God, I hope, you know, was everything all right? Did everything turn out all right? I'm like, yeah, it sounded great. What are you talking about? He's like, you tried so hard 
to do your best John Larroquette. And I think you pulled it off. I think it sounds you go check out the episode. Yes. Oh, thank you. I, yeah. I, I appreciate that. Yeah. It, 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 you don't think about how specific John Larroquette's voice is. And this is high John Larroquette mm. because he did the <laughs> regret the crawl for weed. That was that's that was the exchange that happened. So this is high Jean Larroquette in the early 70s, pre-Night Court Jean Larroquette. He's like rolling it while he's reading yeah, it, like yeah. licking mm-hmm. it and everything. How much weed do you think he got for that? A couple of joints. Yeah, yeah, probably almost. Not, not much. much. They didn't no, have a lot. I think I think the exchange yeah. rate was different then. Maybe they took him to White Castle. <laughs> I don't know. The first White Castle. Give him a crave case. So yes, the, here is the opening oh, title. Okay. There's two. There's this, and then there's the follow-up. So there okay. you go. Here we go. Yeah, give me a pronunciation on the- Do it uh, in your best John Larroquette. Oh, no, no, no. I can't. <laughs> Cocorada, yeah. Cocorada. Mm-hmm. The Brazilian Cocorada bug has survived in the Amazon rainforest for millions of years. Unfortunately, the destruction of the forest by land developers threatens the very existence of this undiscovered species. But- These creatures are not mere garden-variety insects. They're really big. And they've got an attitude. Wow. Is that it? There's one more. There's one more? more? Yeah. Missionaries teaching natives English. No. (laughs) That's my (laughs) note. Quiet bugs That one, yeah. I missed I missed I missed part of it. What did I miss? Oh no, you're right. You did. You got it all. I did everything. I'm sorry. I just started reading the script. I got fucked up there. (laughs) Yeah. Now speaking of missionaries. I mean, not we're not talking about positions. Um, I don't know. It depends. Oh, are uh, we? Not in this particular instance. Yes. I mean, not that we okay. can't talk right. about that. But yes, missionaries. Yeah. But they're but in the beginning of this, they're in the rainforest. They're teaching them how to read. There's an indigenous tribe. There is an indigenous in the Brazilian tribe. rainforest, and they're teaching them how to read. Uh, the Applegates, the the novel well, of the movie. Dick and J- Dick and Jane. Right. Right. Is it Dick and Jane? Yes. I, yeah. See Dick. See Spot Run. Oh, I run, didn't know that. Run. I didn't know that had like Dick a name. Dick and Jane, and then there yeah. was Sally and John. Dick and Jane grew up in the book, and then they had Sally and Johnny as their kids, and then they took all of those names oh. and named themselves. Oh yeah. When they go to civilization. Oh, yeah. Oh shoot. Oh dang! I have them in the car, but I brought some Butterfingers for you. Oh, oh did you? <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. But it's probably a good those. thing I would have been eating him on the show, <laughs> yeah, trying to talk yeah. with all that yeah, shit. I think like De- Denise Sinobi was trying to tie it to Beetlejuice. You think so? They were trying to get Zagna. got some good yeah, for yeah, you. Yeah. Zagnuts, yeah. Couldn't get Zagna to sign off on well, it. Well, we had we had the giant beetle in that one scene. Yeah, yeah. we got we got to do a whole movie of that shit. So 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 okay. So they're reading this book now, I'm, and they all look like the actors, by which, the way. Which I'm assuming yes, then they all look exactly like the actors. Yeah. So they're they're they're, they're shape shifters. They're making themselves right. look like yeah. these normal people mm-hmm. in a textbook so that they can assimilate into human society. Which I'm assuming the name of the book was the Applegates. It was I, they not, don't though, say I don't that. Think. Though? I think so because it's Dick and Jane Applegate, and I think it's in the book. In oh, the maybe book. they do. Okay, yeah. interesting. I think because, it's in the book because this is my thing: is that you, you know the Oregon Trail? They teach you that in school. Yes, yeah. the Applegates were a family. There's the Applegate uh, Trail also. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, it's like one of the most American apple pie names right. of them uh, all. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I and, and there's an interesting thing that I had. I fell in this dot, dot, deep hole in the internet yeah. where they're talking about how uh, the, the Native Americans, before the Applegates came, the Native Americans had this controlled burning that they would do to sort of keep the, uh, um, the the pests and grasshoppers and things under control. Okay. And then when Because the they'd set- eat the crops? Yeah. And when the settlers came, they shoot all the Indians out of there and set up their farms and stuff, but really didn't know how to maintain the land. So all the freaking grasshoppers came back. Gotcha. So I'm wondering if that is in a sideways way referenced with this story. That is very deep. It's possible because it's they don't ever flat out say that the bugs live like near those indigenous tribes, but like they're right there. You know, they got to be, you know, well, even it, though they're pushed it's like into a, that area because the construction is destroying the rainforest. Right. And it's like a local a local legend for these for these. Folks. Oh, yeah, that's true, yeah. too. Yeah. That the, these bug people or bugs, they don't call them people just 
dogs exist. Well, because mm-hmm. the guy comes running up and he's screaming at the guy in, in right. I don't know what, whatever language that they're speaking. Right. Mm-hmm. And he's like, oh, oh, giant bugs are attacking. Mm-hmm. Right. And they are. And the giant and they, bugs are attacking. And they smack and that guy's hat off. I love it. I yeah, love that you get the yeah. bug vision with the, the, with yeah, the antenna. The antenna's going into the, into the point of view. Yeah. And then the, he knocks the guy's helmet yeah. off just for fun. Was that Ed Bagley, you it think? Probably, yeah. And then just starts eating all the construction workers down in the rainforest. Yeah. And then they find the book after they eat all and a that. butterfinger too. and a butterfinger yeah. candy bar and it's just the is it which is it the er finger part i think the butt is broken <laughs> i think the butt's eaten yeah, yeah. they, already they ate broke the, the butt yeah. off they, broke the butt. <laughs> they eat the butt whatever sorry <laughs> and then we just kind of get these like bugs kind of like motioning towards this book and then just like they point <laughs> at the thing that says the this is my home this is my street yeah and then it kind of like zooms in on it and we get like a fade into the actual now human Applegate's walking well, in. Yeah, it cuts to the step to the, the stepfather. It looks just like yeah. that yeah. house in the book. It cuts to the stepfather yeah. neighborhood. Yeah, oh yeah. Oh, you know he's there. Look, they're trying to hit every single norm on the nose. Problem mm-hmm. child's out there. Do Him you... and Trixie are causing trouble. <laughs> they're in Mortville, right? Which you think uh, that par- uh, Trixie and uh, what the fuck's I-, I-, I forgot his name already. Junior. Junior, you think they get uh, stuck in some egg sacks later? D- probably. <laughs> <laughs> shoved oh, into the basement oh, of the attic. Yeah, Johnny Applegate's biting those little fuckers. He made us puke all over the place. <laughs> Get him in the sack. <laughs> But yeah, they move into this town, and I love well, how they. O- Otho's twin brother lives on that street too, right? Also, too, oh, yeah, God, yeah. Glenn Shaddix. Glenn Shaddix. Oh my God, talk about him in a second. I just want to mention when they walk in, they literally are like bugs holding the boxes on their head, like yeah. walking all uniformly. I thought that was kind of a nice touch. Oh yeah, but, but you're right, Glenn Shaddix, which yeah. gives it more Beetlejuice vibes and heavy. yes, it yes. does. Yeah. Um. Oh yeah, he's in that too, isn't he? Yeah. So it's, again, it's the Denise Denovi continuum. We gotta get we gotta get Glenn Shaddix in here, baby. <laughs> who's hilarious in this movie? Oh, he's yeah, uh, he, an he underrated is, comedian. He's the exterminator who yes. lives next door. Yeah, <laughs> and like seeing him, like this is the only other movie that I really remember him in. Like a big, sure. I mean, like I think he's in Sleepwalkers too, isn't he? Still haven't seen it. Pretty sure he's in Sleepwalkers. But um, this is his Sleepwalkers. other big movie that I remember uh, Glenn Shaddix from. I got to meet him once. Oh. And he was one of the sweetest guys I've ever met. He, seemed... he was wearing the robe, like the Otho robe. Oh, nice. Yeah, wow. it was great. <laughs> he, he seems like he's a lot of fun because he obviously has a great sense of humor and that he's got a lot more range, I think, than people give him credit for because this is a totally different type of person. He's, he's got like a him. southern accent and oh, shit. Yeah. It's like, And he's knocking it out of the park. Um, he passed away, you know. Yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah, I think we mentioned that on another episode, but he had that horrible accident where he fell and hit his head. Yeah, and he like, fell down just... the stairs. Yeah. Oh right, yeah. Oh my god, it's terrible. So yeah, Glenn Shaddix is there as Greg Sampson, who's the who's the next door neighbor. You got Ed Bagley as Dick Applegate. You got Stalker Channing as Jane Applegate, and you got uh, Bobby Jacoby as Johnny Applegate. And I forget who plays Sally. Also, also known as Robert Jane. He has a different name according to Wikipedia. Oh, that was like a, a stage name that he had. Oh really? Uh, also, by the way, before you move on, Jacoby, the son. Fucking Perry from Night of the Demons too. Oh yeah, he's also the kid um in Tremors, dude. Right. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, Melvin. Melvin. Yes. Yes. And then there's the uh, sister Sally. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I haven't. I don't know, I if, don't I've know if I've seen, seen her, her in anything. anything else. She was the 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 Ursets, uh Christina Applegate. <laughs> she was the original. She was the. And, she, oh, well, is that true? Well, I'm because Mary with Children for tying it to. Mary oh, Wood there Children. you go. Yeah. Christina Applegate was the daughter on Married with Children. Yeah. And her name's Applegate. <laughs> and then this is another gross family. And they have a daughter who no one knows the name of. So she's like the bizarro Christina Applegate. I guess she could be. Yeah. Why yeah. not? Mm-hmm. MDU. Yeah. It, it's all connected. You know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they all move in. And That's Glenn right. Shaddix is like there with this dog. It's like this. Uh, what is that? Uh, pit it's, a, it's a Rottweiler. Rottweiler. Yeah. And it's immediately going after their little like Yorkie. And you're like, all right, what's going on here? But uh, we kind of saved that for later. And yeah. Glenn Shaddix is like, yeah, welcome to the town. Yeah, I'm a bug exterminator. If you ever need my services. Well, he, I don't. He, I don't think he mentions it now. It's oh, like he does picnic, anyway. But it's a good punchline. Uh, yeah, and then they've got uh, for some reason the dog that's with them is also a bug. A bug. You <laughs> find out. Yeah, I'm waiting the whole movie to see. Like, it's got to be a bug, right? It's got to be a bug, and then you get the reveal later. You're like, okay, oh, that makes just, sense. Just real quick, we heard it in the beginning of the movie, sure. like when when the bug when Dick Applegate first came out, like at the construction site. But like the voice of the bugs. Oh yeah. Is is our good friend Frank Welker? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> we would be remiss to not mention that. Oh, yes. dude, he does. He goes fucking full stripe later, but we'll get to that. <laughs> they gave him some good stuff to work yeah. with in this. Yeah. 
So yeah, the whole plan for the bugs is to move in and infiltrate and being the mo- they have to be the most normal family so they don't get found out that they're bugs. They examine the census and they try to hit every every norm on the nose. Yes. Mm-hmm. Like and bags the- full of butterfingers, obviously. Yeah. Oh, there's a scene where Ed Bagley's on the computer trying to crack the census and he tries the password swordfish. Swordfish. Yeah. It, how long was that a thing? I don't know. That I know there's that about movie hackers called Swordfish. Wasn't that but that came That's out like way that later. Came out later so yeah. that must have already been a, a thing. cultural thing of that being a password, right? Yeah, it had to be, right? Yeah. So he types in password, and then he gets into the census. Well, that's a funny gag. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't know if he actually no, no. does that. Uh, but then yeah, he changes and, and, all their and, like, identities. Every computer in every movie, it tells you whether you get access. You're just not instantly oh, yeah. in. It <laughs> Welcome. It always tells you that there's access granted <laughs> or whatever. It's always it's always access denied. It's like it always tells you when you can't get in and tells you when you're getting in. Yeah. Only computers and movies do that. You either get in <laughs> or, you or you don't, don't get in. It doesn't tell you you don't no. get in. Or you enhance. Or it doesn't tell you you got in yeah uh but yeah yes. well you know when movies things enhance yeah it's not a real thing so we so we get so we get the setup that he's working at the nuclear power plant and well whole... he also creates their identities by hacking into the fbi's fucking database. yeah that's, that's yeah. what he does I, yeah. he's got like a manual how the fuck these bugs know how to do all this shit i don't know they're from middle earth man they, they could be they're yeah they've been erased for millions of years exactly very adaptable but in the well there very you go i think that's what it is this is one of my favorite scenes now I, I, I know that I said in the beginning that I used to watch this movie all the time, but especially in high school. Really? So when I was a kid, I watched it because I was like, oh, I love the bugs. And then in high school, I was like, oh, shit, I remember that movie, The Apple Gates. And I used to watch it all the time. I smoked a lot of weed in high school. So this. <laughs> so you identified with the, the sun? Yes. I was oh, the very punker? Jo- yeah, the Johnny, yeah. You like heavy metal music? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is I one do? Of, this is one of the funniest fucking things to watch when you're ripped up, dude. Because like I the mean... way they bounce from like, hi, I'm Dick Applegate. And then they're just like. Uh, the creature seems harmless or whatever. They're eating like fucking butterfingers and shit. Anyway, there's a roll call here. And it's one of the funniest things because uh, he like quizzes them all on their personas. He's like, would you state your name and like what you do and stuff? And it's like this rapid fire succession. They're like, oh, my name's uh, Jane Applegate. I'm a housewoman. I'm a housewife and blah, 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 blah. And they get to fucking uh, Johnny Applegate. And he's like forgetting like all of his lines. And he's like, he's like, and he's like, in heavy metal music, you like heavy metal music? And he's like, oh yeah, and I'm 15. Mm-hmm. Know, it's the funniest <laughs> fucking shit. Which then and, later and, they have those punkers that are like trying well, to like. And they're not punkers, they're heavy metal, uh, metal okay. yeah. kids. Kevin and, Kevin kids. and. Uh, and they're twins. Kenny. Yeah. Well, they, they seem like Heather's characters. Those yeah. Two a little bit. Twins, I, I like that they quiz him though. Like, oh, I thought you liked heavy metal music. And he's like, uh. Apple bone. They're always calling him fucking like apple seed and yeah. shit. Apple seed, apple, <laughs> apple sauce. Apple sauce. Apple bone's my yeah. favorite. Apple, apple fat. Apple bone. Apple <laughs> fat. Um, so then we get like, we, we get, yeah, they're at school. So Johnny and Johnny and uh, Sally are at school. I still don't know why they took the kids. And Ed Bagley's like, I don't know. We took them so we can seem more normal. So that's why the yeah. kids are there. A little bit more material to work with, I guess, yeah. for the sake of the movie. I mean, honestly, the whole thing is a MacGuffin for just to see them trying to assimilate into if, real 100%. Uh, as a family when yeah. they're bugs. And to be somewhat subverted by all of the vices of being a human. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And that's, the, that's what we start to get into because now they're in going into society. They have no idea how actual humans act. And they're everything that they know about humans is based on the, the most normal statistic. Or they were like watching TV even and like writing and shit like down. And they're like taking notes. <laughs> yeah. And they, I guess they quickly realize that normal's not normal. Most no. people no. are not what's considered normal. Yeah. And they, they kind of all sort of fall into these different uh, very human things. And they don't know how to react a lot of the time. Mm-hmm. They eat a lot of sugar. Yeah, they I love that bit. Yeah, yeah, just a whole thing of Aunt Jemima maple syrup with a straw. Oh, and just sipping it. Mom it. sipping it. Another slice of chocolate coming up. Yeah, yeah. yeah just all just <laughs> bags of sugar in everything. Everything has got that. Uh, 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 she makes this like pie that's just like sugar and slime and nothing. Oh, God. Yet. I thought that was poop, honestly. Oh, it at is. The at fair. the picnic? Yeah. Is that poop? It's I a shit it's, pie. Yeah, because that piece yeah. takes a bite out of that. Because the because the pastor like takes a bite out of it, it and he just spits, spits it, it out on oh, fucking like grandma's great log shooting out of his yeah, mouth. It's oh, fucking, see, it's hilarious. Now I didn't, I missed that. Yeah. Wow. There's so much. There's so much like. There's a lot of bug jokes. It, it feels like it's very like skit based. Yes. The movie. Mm-hmm. So like then there's then Dick is like 
putting dog food out for the for the for spot and he like licks it and eats it yeah. that's another fucking and I weird think funny a magic scene. trick there because he because he's got the dog food yeah and he he puts it in his hand and he eats it and we 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 go up here and he puts it in his mouth i think they switch the bowl out for whatever they give the dog you think so maybe yeah i don't know i mean they should just get could just give him something that the dog can <laughs> oh, also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but it's kind of interesting that we don't see the bowl for a second yeah and then it goes down to the floor, and then the dog eats it. I'm right? Thinking, did they do a switch real quick? They did a Texas why? switch. Yeah. Why would they do that otherwise? That's a good point. We get introduced to Dabney Coleman because he calls right after this. Oh, Aunt B. Aunt B is the queen of the Mantis Hive. I don't think that's how Mantis work, but maybe no. the Cocoradas do. The Cocorada Hive. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which I guess is I don't know. They we don't really go into what that is or how it yeah, works. They're kind of like praying mantises, but they're like six feet tall. <laughs> they're giant praying mantises. Yeah, yeah, giant praying mantises, and kind of looks like that one mantis creature that was in Star Wars in the Cantina that you. Oh, a little see. bit. Oh, the yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like that dude. Yeah, and uh, but I don't know why. Like, um, I, I almost feel like they did need a little more bug setup. Like, they they, they mm. really they really make you accept. Oh, they're shapeshifters and they're giant bugs. Fuck it. They even have like a gag at one point where Ed Bakley like goes in the shower and you hear him like stripping down and his wife's like, oh, you, oh, you took your skin off you and changed you didn't tell me. me. Yeah. yeah. And it's like implied they're going to fuck in the shower and it's like, oh, okay. Uh, let's talk about Aunt B real quick and then we'll talk yeah, about that because yeah. I, I want to get into the yes. semantics of okay. how they can assimilate let's, let's and not... assume uh, human identity. So, yeah. And Aunt B doesn't seem to understand... Uh, the society approved gender norms. No, and especially it's like, in 1990. But yeah. like, I guess the joke here is just that. Yeah, Dabney Dabney Coleman is a woman, and that's what he's like assumed. Like that he's the that's the identity he's chosen or she's chosen. Well, it's like because uh, well, it's the queen, but they're inside a man's body, but because they don't understand how humans work. Because even like some of the drones, as they refer to them as, are it's in like, women's skins. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And they're talking with male voices, yeah. so it's like so, kind of I don't know. Like they don't get it. I think that the, that the, to the bugs there, there isn't really a lot of. They're difference. just like whatever. Yeah. It's like it yeah. doesn't matter. It's like yeah. okay, I'm I'm female, but I want to be Dabney Coleman and have a big mustache. Yeah, and it doesn't for them. They don't even think that right. that would be challenged at all. No, it's not a thought that even pops in their head. Yeah. Right. There is some funny gags that go with it though. Mm -hmm. I love when he's on the phone and he's he, so he calls he calls uh, Ed Bagley Jr. and he's like he's like oh, did the lines tap to speak English because the lines tap. So I guess he did. You know Frank Welker was off that day, mm -hmm. and uh, this Someone guy his ass. yeah this construction worker walks ass. by and pitches his ass and he's like you homo sapien scum <laughs> yeah I'm like oh my god but he's talking to Ed Bagley and he's like he's like is everything okay Ed he's like yeah some asshole tried to rape me. <laughs> That fucking line yeah, kills that, me that every line, time. That line killed me he too. says it so yeah, casually. Yeah, oh, yeah. Some asshole tried, uh, to, some rape asshole tried to rape me. Just tried, and anyway, right into his next <laughs> line. And, yeah. and Ed Bailey's just like, huh? Okay, oh, yeah. yeah. And like the whole the uh, it's just so funny because how they understand the culture and like even what that is. Yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. And like the whole thing is Aunt B is coming from Brazil up there to help destroy this nuclear power plant and they're supposed to be setting up everything getting the the detail if you will they're getting the plans so right. that when when Aunt B gets there with the drones they can dig a tunnel to the place and destroy the uh, nuclear power plant because it's causing i guess because they show the construction in the beginning it's causing the bugs to be displaced and everything well yeah because they're taking away their home so they're right. like oh well let's try to destroy some of the humans home and like retaliate basically mm -hmm. yeah I, but, I, that's what i'm seeing this is a nature strikes back kind of thing and that yeah. was a really common theme of horror movies oh, yeah. in the 70s where yeah. you'd have you know whatever there'd be some kind of construction mm -hmm. and then the bugs would fight back I yeah mean, or like it giant came from, it came from lakewood manor as that yeah. same premise mm -hmm. you got construction workers working on a hotel and the ants kill it like, food of the gods food of the gods so i think that they yeah. took this kind of premise and they go okay now you've got these these bugs that are just just you know human-sized bugs yeah who are going to assimilate amongst us and and take revenge for us tearing down their homes and and or destroy, the planet and yeah destroying the uh, planet as a whole yeah. or on some level i mean they don't dig deep into this concept but revenge for bugs on some level because yeah, there's a no, lot 100%. of like anti-bug shit which you know i'm kind of on board with that it's their manifest want, destiny yeah well, i don't want these bugs all over me either but <laughs> yeah that's how they would react they don't go full you know edward from uh uh Men in Black, obviously, but Arr, excuse yeah. me, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, there's a lot of Vincent D'Onofrio's yeah, there, right? Yeah. But there's a lot of scenes peppered throughout where, especially with Glenn Shaddix comes around, where they're like talking about killing bugs, and they're like, hey, 
what if they like were, what if they were giant spiders? I oh, know, not that movie. That's got the guy from uh, what the fuck's his name? The WCW guy, uh, David Arquette. David Arquette. Oh, Eight Legged Freaks. Yeah, yeah. That, that's that's yeah. a different movie altogether. Yeah. I know I said the WCW, WCW guy, <laughs> the, the, the Ready to Rumble guy. Yeah, well, he did actually win the championship. Did he? <laughs> yes, he did. That's my touchstone. So not scream. Sean said before that uh, he they you know uh, Ed Bagley changes it back into his mantis form. And you see them sleep. They don't sleep in a bed. They sleep in fucking cocoons. And you see them like the right. kids. You know, uh, Sally's up in a corner. Johnny's in the in the uh, uh, One of closet. Them's on the floor next to the bed. Yeah. Right. You see the the pincer coming up to hit the clock. So he gets up and he says, "Okay, crawlers, rise and mutate." Mm-hmm. So did they have some kind of secretion or something that puts these human skins onto their mantis bodies? I don't know if they think thought that huh. through. Before, you know what I mean? It doesn't seem consistent across the movie. No. Sometimes they'll just have one mantis arm and the rest of them will be human. Or like their or things the come out. Or yeah. come out and mm-hmm. the rest of them will be human. But then there's sometimes where it seems like they've got skin over the right. top of, yeah. of, 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 of mantis looking Body, bodies. like, does it pop out? Like, yeah. like, like, I don't know. Like, it, like, it... so I don't know if it's a werewolf type transformation mm. to where parts of them can turn. Why are we giving this such kids? Uh, well, well, That's the well, show. Well, look, if <laughs> look, if Edgar can fit inside Vincent D'Onofrio, I right. guess it's fine. But he's all fucked up, and he, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. No, the, the, there's something. Um, I feel like you know. Again, they talk it about it briefly. How they can, uh, how actual insects can pretend to be part of the furniture. Sure, actual insects can change their coloring to match leaves and things. So I, I, I mean, part of this might be somewhat uh, a symbolic, you know, mm. where uh, uh, you know maybe there's some kind of illusion happening to where oh, we're what we see what versus we what see they, yeah, versus what's really what they really are. I, I think well, it's it, kind of like mimic, but uh, well, but yeah. again, they're still sure. very much bugs. I, I feel like it's just a case of like don't overthink it because it was just like we only had enough money for certain things, so like we gotta had just if we could get a cool transformation scene, we did it. Yeah. So that's where you get those like more grotesque yeah. scenes. And if we did it, we just kind of were like, don't overthink it. it just, we could transfer body parts if we want. Just don't think it too. I was just, just don't think about it too much. I was just trying to squeeze you guys for your theories of how the bugs that's, actually do this. Nah, that's literally <laughs> my theory is that it was a production decision. What looked good, what didn't. I, I think that's the real yeah, reason. No, I, I, know. Know. I, I think that they probably set up a bunch of transformation gags and and they had and they used every idea they had in their in their yeah. kit box, in their in their magic box of fun ideas. And, and they did things that I wasn't expecting, so that was a good thing. <laughs> like the way the transformations are, I guess, activated. Sure. Now like uh, so they've been there for a few weeks now, and they're kind of like getting used to uh, how people act and how people react and what other, especially it starts with the kids because they're the most influential, right? Especially or, Sally. Or the the most bat. easily influenced, you mean. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Or excuse me, not influential. Yeah, easily influenced. Excuse they're me. not influencers. No, no. It's not too yet. early for not that. Not yet anyway. Not yet. No, really they're kids. It could be. Maybe the Cocoradas are going to start mm-hmm. a fucking TikTok or something. Mm-hmm. So uh, they're at a picnic. Yes, and right, that's the where fair, the pastor yeah. eats so the the, the, the shit pie. Of, of shit. No, it's an old family yeah, recipe. There's like sense. there's like buzzing of like a fly. And I just stuff. thought it was like a shoe. See, I'm from Amish country, so it's just like I was thinking like it was a shoe fly pie. Just that's like what I thought at first. Yeah. But shit sugar, fly. And, uh, shit fly pie. <laughs> Nothing but just syrup and sugar Sir, as well, a pie. That but, would make sense. But all but shit pie for bugs makes sense too. Since she's also digging in the trash for food. Eating they eat lettuce ra- out of a dumpster. Yeah, they eat they eat rancid garbage for yeah. like dessert. That's so. the that's the primo stuff oh. is the rancid garbage. Yeah. And behind the seven eleven. Now you're talking. That's the really good <laughs> that's stuff. That's the good yeah, stuff. The gourmet shit. A couple of toenails in there perhaps. Oh, oh, no. oh man. Well they're at this fair and they're like chit chatting with like Glenn Shaddix and a couple other their neighbors and he's like, Yeah, you know, I'm gonna exterminator he's like i got this little device oh that uh will drive any bug crazy the sonic bug repeller yeah. that's a great bit it's a because, great bit because they're trying to <laughs> yeah. like pretend they don't hear it <laughs> yeah. and, and and when we cut to them with a yeah. <laughs> meanwhile yeah glenn shags is like and, and this thing will scare the shit out of all those bugs and it's just like ed bakley yeah and, and yeah. stalker channing like this and, and then they go from just that silence yeah. of his him saying what he's saying <laughs> to the noise and they're like, mm, that's great Work, yeah. works great yeah. they're yelling over it he's like why are you yeah, yelling yeah no it was that was that was really great it's it just looked one. like a salt shaker on a box yeah yeah um, but it was a good pro- nice like a prop. strainer yeah 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 just on a, on a garage door open yeah. that's what it was <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, but you know, they probably had, they probably were, were, were ready to shoot. It's like, we don't have the device. Can we just, yeah, make I just something here you go. Quick? It was in the hotel room sink. Yeah. We'll prop this together. So we switched to this pretty, it's a pretty dark scene Which with, scene with Vince Sampson and Sally oh, in, in the, yeah. uh, in the, uh, this uh, date. Cemetery? No, no, no. Yeah, well, we do have that too. scene. Yeah. Well, that one kissing. too. Yeah. He's yeah. like, he's like trying to come on to her. And, Rough trade. Yeah. Like, that's what I like. You know who this fucking guy is? A piece of shit. <laughs> yes. But he plays the same exact character oh. in Leprechaun 2. Oh, who is he in that? He's the guy who gets killed by the, uh, the lawnmower. In the garage. <laughs> now, is this guy also in Heather's also? He I might be. I don't know. He might be. Because I was looking at some of the actors earlier, and I didn't like make a mental note of it, but some of them, like we were just talking about, had a little bit of, uh, we're in both films. Yeah. Well, he survives at the end of this movie, so we know that and he gets it from they, the leprechaun, and so he gets his come up. think he's cute? Because he's, he's voted some... best hair in the class. He, 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 looks, he, he looks like a Neanderthal. <laughs> yes, which... And, and all of the girls are like, he's a jerk. It's too bad he's so adorable. Yeah. It's too bad I want to get in his pants. Yeah. <laughs> But but he is a, a bad person. It's like, no, he doesn't look like a good person. No. And Sally looks like a cretin. Sally knows that he's a cretin. Mm-hmm. And she treats him or he treats her like total shit. Oh yeah. But yet she still goes after him for some reason. Yeah, so like Lobo said, there is that scene where they're in the cemetery where they're kissing, yeah. but then later, like Joe is setting up, there's that date. But he he takes her to um the gym, the gymnasium. He's playing like basketball. Mm. And uh it's weird because this movie takes like a super, super dark turn right here because Vince Sampson ends up raping Sally on the trampoline. Yeah. And then her mandibles come out or not her mandibles, but her, her weird extra feet claws yeah. Yeah. or her or come out. Her eyes and bug both, out of her head. Her eyes bug out of her head really weird. Literally bug out of her head. And, and, and like I thought he, she was just going to scissor his head right off. She I kind of wish right she did. Yeah. yeah, that's what I was hoping for. Yeah. And what's weird is, is that I feel like for, for so so much thought that murder was justified in that moment yeah. that I just assumed that his character was dead and that all those people they were cocooning were dead from that point forward. I never thought, oh, we're just keeping them in a cocoon to be alive later. Which is weird Same. because it's not that kind of movie, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Once they, once the second group of people got stuck in the, the sack, I was like, okay, I guess, like you just said, they're either just dead or they're going to get let out because they weren't inherently evil like Vince. But it's like... All right, now what does that imply at the end of the film? But we'll talk yeah. about that when we get there. I and I don't know. Like again, that's a weird point where you don't know how you are supposed to feel about the Apple game. Right. No, but you see that they are starting to be cor- become more corrupt from the more, oh, the more interaction they have through human. I mean, I mean, contaminated. There, are, there's yeah. a there's a heart of darkness happening there. <laughs> yes, where the longer they are in civilization with humans, mm-hmm. the worse they get, and they start resenting each other. They too. do. Because like even Sally, like leading up to that, she changes like her her how she dresses, she's wearing more makeup. Then now we have a Johnny starts hanging out with those metal heads. Johnny's the next one to go. Yeah, they get him to steal two hundred bucks from Ed Bagley. He's smoking. They're making him smoke, having him smoke cigarettes. Cigarettes. Yeah. Well, at first he doesn't want to take the money. He's like, that's wrong. And then Ed Bagley grounds him for some bullshit. Mm-hmm. And then he's like, fuck that. He takes the money. And then they show up. Uh, it, it might be a little bit later, but they show up and that's they come fine. through his window and they're like. uh... He's like, oh, you got my money back? Oh, we got something better. They pulled this massive bag of like OG <laughs> right, Kush. Righteous Puna, dude. It's righteous in- Puna. Right. <laughs> and he fucking takes a huge bite out of it. He's like, ugh. You don't eat it, man. You, you smoke, smoke it. it. Yeah. it so he, we have this giant bug creature smoking a fucking joint. And Johnny's sitting there puffing away in, in, the, uh, in the room. And he starts sprouting. Oh, yeah. His antenna. He losing lo- control. He loses his ability to keep this facade, his human facade yeah. going. So as the more high he gets, the more bug like oh God. He gets. Which he's is like, hilarious if this giant bug high off its ass. Yeah, well, yeah, because he's like, hey, dude, pass that roach. And he's like, what? Dude, that's the ultimate roach clip. Yeah. That fucking thing he's holding <laughs> it. Oh, that uh, is mantis that, cloth. That, that was hilarious. Thingy. And then they just think they're tripping. Like, yeah. they see him as a bug, and they don't even know that anything's wrong. Where's they Johnny, man? They're just high, and this is what they're seeing is him as a bug. Where's he Johnny, man? I think that fucking mutinate him. <laughs> like, he could have just showed them the door, and they would have been fine. They would have yeah. thought nothing yeah. of it, but they but get egg sacked. They get, they, get, they get sacked? Yeah. They get, I don't know. I mean, literally. I kept saying egg sacked, but. Yeah, I mean, sacked. 
exact cocoon, same difference. They bite them and they like have them. There's some kind of venom that makes right. them pass yeah, out. Yeah, they got this in a nice makeup, by the way. Yeah. The weird kind of the puncture that they all have. Yeah, the circular the little there. mouth or whatever. Mm-hmm. I also love how they have this like. Uh... Open up applesauce. <laughs> exactly. They have this game of like. Not hide and seek. I didn't know like the right, right word for it, but like, do you feel like there needed to be a C plot, like FBI guys after them, or some kind of more immediate danger other than them just trying to figure out their mission? Yes, because it gets weird. Because now this this when when Sally takes Vin Sampson, that is how this all jumps off. Because it's mm. like, oh, somebody kidnapped Vin Sampson, and there's a kidnapper on the loose. And then that's what has all the people like call a town meeting and be like, right. Fringe is a good boy. Why would he just disappear unless somebody took him? Uh, and then everybody starts to get scared. He went with this gay boy, Larry. <laughs> wow, right. <laughs> what? Went, the the 90s to, come he, back with a vengeance with went the to weird anti-gay stuff. And I'm like, OK, I, well, I get what they're trying to do here. And on some level, it's kind I of funny. It was but more of, the, more of the reflecting the value. 100 percent. 100 percent. In that town. That yeah, was also yeah. leading the witness a little yeah, bit. Yeah. Like like the sheriff's like, well, OK, so Sally is sick and she hasn't been in school. Right, right, right. And the sheriff goes to see her, to question her about the Vince Sampson disorder appearance and she's like she's like oh i don't know he went to he he was gonna get beer from this guy uh johnny something and he lives in akron or whatever and he's like uh yeah he, she didn't, he didn't say much else about him except that he was really friendly and the sheriff's like you think there was any homosexual things going on <laughs> and she's like I don't know. The whole time she's looking at mom, and Vince is in the fucking. Closet. I know. But the whole, yeah, but the whole point <laughs> yeah. was to set up that joke. That, that exactly. Joke. It's like maybe he was in the closet. Wink. That's all upset. Listen, I don't want to harp on it. I don't want to harp on it. No, I mean I think it's a funny gag. Like, it's just later than Glenn Shaddix and his wife are like really mad about it, and I'm like, all right, I could have cut that scene, but okay, fine. Yeah. I feel like such a know, minor also complaint. Also, in Heather's, I think that you know to show like people's just belligerent outrage over anything gay True. was such a groundbreaking thing because that was a thing that was not exposed at all. It's also, I guess, so, calling so, it out in that in that sense. That's what yeah. I'm saying. I mean, we when we watch things now, we watch them at face value because all those things were kind of out. All those things are kind of out in the open now. Yeah. But to to call that out then and to show people's ugliness in those situations mm-hmm. then. Mm-hmm. It, 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 you you really were kind of dragging people out and going, this is how you look when you talk like this. Oh, 100%. Yeah, that's true. But it's also commentating on the fact that like, but he's the handsome jock guy right. who gets mm-hmm. all the girls. He can't possibly mm-hmm. be gay, mm-hmm. yeah. but he probably is. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, he certainly doesn't like women too much. <laughs> no. no, he doesn't. It's, there's a, definitely a rage thing happening yeah. there. So another bug is, has been corrupted. <laughs> Another bug has been corrupted by the human society. Mm-hmm. Um, Mom's next, and so the <laughs> thorax turns. Yeah. <laughs> That's the yeah, 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 exactly the soap opera. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So mom gets hooked on credit cards from her friend Opal, who just basically is like, "It's free money." It, well. That's a weird thing, too, because she's, like, rooting in the garbage, and Opal picks her up, and she's like, well, I don't have any money to go shopping. She's like, put her on plastic. She's like, what? Yeah. We don't have the money for that. And they literally show her filling out her application (laughs) and applying for a credit card and getting it. Yeah. It's really interesting, this quick, again, this acceleration of her suddenly becoming materialistic and greedy Mm -hmm. on uh, on behalf of her friend, who we really don't care about. I don't know why they bring that character back later. No one would have cared if her friend Opal ever came back no. in that story. Well, it, she's the wife of the guy who runs the power plant. Oh, is that what it is? Okay. Oh. Yeah. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Well, he can afford it then. Well, yeah. She's not happy that, about whole, that bill, no, but he can afford because it. Because I never really realized until last night. Okay. And I was like, how the fuck does she have Because she has like 20 credit cards and she's oh, like, oh, okay. come on, honey, That pay, scene is hilarious yeah. when they're at the restaurant because it's just like, yeah, yeah pick, a, pick a card, yeah, any she card. Not like yeah. a magician. <laughs> yeah. Any, yeah. Try this one. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh yeah, but she's she's dude's wife, so oh yeah, but, but yeah, mom okay. gets a serious addiction, uh between just going to the store, spending money. Well, technically not spending money, he's going on the card, and then later she's on the home shopping network. But when when Ed she's fir- addicted, man, was she, it is. The, the, she is, she uh, is the, the bum thumper, or what was the name of that thing that she? Was oh, wearing? the massager. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was bump thumper. Yeah, it, but yeah. It, it goes on your on your, your glutes. Butt. Yeah, it goes on your glutes. Yeah, you lay down and you put it on your backside. I don't know why but she had to order it. Yeah, I don't know why she didn't get it. I mean, everybody takes Discover card. 
<laughs> they didn't let her. You know what's hilarious about Discover Card is that American Express has now become the Discover Card. Like you yeah. can't get anyone to take American Express anywhere. No, it's, rarely. It, it, Unless, well, business cards, I think. Um, right. Uh, uh, I, well, I don't. It's know. just hard just, to use I in comparison. See, I always see when I go into an establishment, I always say we don't take American Express. I see that more often. Mm. Whereas it used to be Discover had that rep. Where you go into a place like we don't take its Discover card, yeah. you know, whatever. Right. What is that? Your Captain America fan club card? <laughs> Get out of here! You know, I, I that, the bet you need I, the bat card. Yeah, yeah, the, right, the bat card. Bat yeah. card. Uh, maybe you could answer this question or someone in the comments, but also like you know, because I was three in 1990 or 1991, whenever this actually gets. I was actually not even born, possibly when it was filmed. But my my <laughs> but the point of me sending it up that way. Was this like where credit cards new around then? Is that why they focused on this so much? No, obviously, they've been that's around like since the thing. 70s. They've been around okay, since the 70s. Okay, because I, I, obviously that's a trope people in movies and in real life. But yeah. credit scores didn't exist till the 80s. Really? Mm-hmm. Okay. Because mm-hmm. so, they were like, oh shit, we got to track this shit. <laughs> yeah, we need to fuck over everyone who's ever had a credit so, card. Uh, it, but that's so a different definitely kind of interest. Was an, an acceleration of it from the okay. 70s yeah. forward. Yeah, I think that the probably the recession of the 70s, they were trying to find ways of just getting people deep into debt. Mm. Yeah. Because yeah. it's it's a funny ass gag. I'm just curious about that. Borrow money from all the poor people. Oh yeah, oh, that's right. God. Yeah. Well, she finally gets that bill in the mail, and she fucking opens it, and it's like the Kevin McAllister oh, receipt at the dude, end of two. Yeah. <laughs> John Hurt is screaming somewhere, man. Oh god, his fucking head exploded. She goes to the bank. She's like, Ah, uh, yeah. What can we do about this? To so, like, we're repossessing your house. Like, you can't <laughs> yeah. pay this off. Get yeah. the fuck out of here. <laughs> uh, well, and, the, and then she, she bought a Cuisinart also. Oh, yeah. And I feel like that was another big funny gag, jokey thing that they did in 80s movies was referencing yeah. a Cuisinart. Like even Mr. Fusion yeah. in, in Back to the Future mm-hmm. on the on the DeLorean, you know, it's very Cuisinart. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Puts like the, balls you know, had yeah, one yeah, too, yeah. a joke like uh, that. Yeah. So I feel like the Cuisinart thing, that was that was a trendy thing. Yes. Uh, every, every housewife, every 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 home ne- suddenly needed the Julianne <laughs> yeah, well, right. in this thing. When they <laughs> never Press you, you can impress your friends yeah, with that. Right. You know, Absolutely. it makes it in seconds. In Don't seconds, worry about it. Obliterates it. Yeah. Sally is oh god, quite ripe by this yes. time. She is pregnant with Vince yeah. Sampson's she takes half her breed. Belt off and then it suddenly goes. <laughs> oh, it's huge. <laughs> yeah. She even goes to like a, a counseling, a counseling. Yeah. You know, it's other mothers yeah. uh, or uh, soon to be mothers. Now and... this this was this is a, a little bit more of an ugly gay stereotype of yeah. lesbian per, uh, the the lesbian who is running the group. Right. Yeah. Where and they almost, get together. She's gl- you know, when she when she's almost gleeful that she hates men. Yeah. Yeah. Gle- yeah. Gleeful that 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 she you know is is has uh, this sudden she's, hatred for men. It's also like she's preying on her, yeah. which yes. is weird. Yeah, she is. Yeah, it is because right because this she's supposed to be like a teacher or a yeah. teacher confidant or, a, or something. A, a mentor, a, a mentor, a thought yeah. leader. I'm listening. Let me listen to your problems. Yeah. Oh, you're single. Yeah, it's, <laughs> you hate men. Yeah. Yeah. The next right on, see, sister. Yeah. The Get next on time, my Harley. Is that, well, right, because the next thing you see her is her kissing Sally as she's getting off the Harley. Yeah, Gail. Yeah, so. Also, like three months into her pregnancy, her family finally notices. Suddenly, suddenly wearing denim and yeah. suspenders. <laughs> right. And, you know. Well, and Dad's thing because all this stuff is kind of intertwined together but dad's thing is like his wife won't fuck him because she read like oh well that's the thing like humans don't fuck their husbands and it's like uh well i'm really horny and she's like tough luck pal oh dude he pulls out the the nature magazine (laughs) and he goes and he spanks his adigas yeah man he's fucking cranking uh, that uh, hog god was it it scientific american yeah yeah. he was reading but he just yeah just just bugs mating pictures of bugs mating the bug is jerking off but we have this like, and he's going at it. Oh, you hear yeah. him like hitting the walls yeah, and shit. Frank yeah. Welker's going having a party in there. <laughs> Welker was that cranking was it while actually, he was recording. Yeah, that was actually Frank Welker <laughs> masturbating. We got a couple of cum shots on the uh, microphone. Yeah. He actually, had to, he had to really get into it. You know, mm-hmm. he was solving to, a mystery. <laughs> they had to change this thing afterwards. This like thing that goes on the microphone. <laughs> The windscreen? Yeah, they had to change The pop it. filter? It's covered. Yeah. His thing is also- he was going full slime around. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. They set up a scene earlier when he gets his job that this secretary oh. is into him. Mm-hmm. Well, now, because he, he needs to fucking fuck something or blow a load, he finally just- Well, whoa, actually, whoa, whoa, it's whoa. set up. You got to set it up because yeah, like, it's this set is up whole, by the other scene. This is right. what Lobo was talking about before with with the whole Invisible Man thing because right. he goes to sneak into the records office to get the plans for the nuclear power. He plant. goes John McClane through the air vents, so he takes off all of his clothes so he doesn't rip them when he transforms into a bug. The only way he can get in there is to go through the air vent, right? Because his card doesn't work; he doesn't have clearance. 
So he's in there and he gets what he needs, and then the the boss comes in and he ends up like running up back into the air shaft and like shits on the floor and like <laughs> he, like skids out. It's yeah. weird, man. But he goes back to find his clothes and he gets fucking Beverly Hills ninja because the janitor cleans up all his oh, clothes yeah. and like throws them out except for a sock. Where he- are my shoes? <laughs> And he's got a strategic sock. He gets the the red hot chili pepper it all the way back to his, yeah. It's so great because there's this big wide shot of his naked, Ed Bagley's naked ass running through the power plant and he's just, and he's skirting around people. And this seems like a real power plant. Yeah. He's running around it naked. That's a hell of a set. Mm -hmm. No cameras. Yeah. Apparently. Makes it back to his office. Butt ass naked. Secretary's there, ready to fucking suck that bug dong. Right. She was already ready. You're right. I forgot about the naked part yeah. first. She's like, "Oh, Mister Ray, you're, I knew you'd come coming for it." And he's like, "Uh, well, yeah." At first, he's like, "I have a wife," and she's like, "Are you sure?" He's like, "You know what? Actually, yeah, I can't take it anymore. Let's do it." Uh, the one of the funniest gags about this scene is that the picture <laughs> is the pictures from the book. That he like pull, that he like folds down when yeah. she's going down yeah, on. Yeah, he's got the family pictures, yeah, and the wife picture and the family picture yeah. up on his desk, and then his art is was his, not his mandible. Is that no, his not his mandible. Reaches up and so walk, so when he it down so, so he doesn't have to look at it while he's doing his secretary. So <laughs> yes, when we're in human form, we got all the right parts. Fellas, yeah, yeah, we got we got dongs and we have vaginas. I guess you have whatever you want to have, right? Yeah, I, because they're shapeshifters. Can they so. control how big it is? You think? I I think they could control every aspect. <laughs> of it. I th- I think that they have um full dong and uh, gina control. <laughs> so here's as my in, in, as in their shape shifting form. It's here's possible. my question then: yeah. Is there a Fuel Rocket, or what is that company called that does all the parody porn? Wood Rocket. Wood Rocket. Is it is it Meet the Apple Gates, but it's X's at the end? This Triple X. Meet the Apple Gates. <laughs> yeah. You know, they got people no, in makeup. No one cared and the, enough. You know. the new bug dicks on the block. I don't know. Yeah, it grows and Come shit. On, that could be pretty funny. Something like that must exist. Maybe not Apple Gates related. You want to uh, fuck a bug? That? Fuck a bug. Rule exactly. Sixty four or whatever. Oh yeah, I think that that's part <laughs> yeah. of it too. I, you know, the thing is, like, I, I there was a. Well, hopefully, this person isn't watching. <laughs> there was a friend of mine who was an animator, and they've been working like sixteen years on this animated film that they were trying to make. And um, you know, I I go to the my friend's studio, and I was like, I'm really interested to see, you know, this thing that you've been working on. I was like, well, I'm not ready to share it with people yet. I've been working on it for a long time. I was like, oh, okay. And then I, I watch a little bit of, of it, and I'm looking through the cells, and it is just a woman being raped by a bug on oh. another planet. I'm like, yeah, I could see why you're hesitant to share that. That's certainly a uh, um, an artistic years. endeavor, yeah. Yeah, sixteen. Yeah. But he years. wanted to see that. He wanted to see. He wanted that image. Yeah. Uh, so he had to create it. That's you know. That's a pure artist. He kept fine tuning it. Reads a lot of Kafka. Yeah. yeah. Reads a lot of Kafka. <laughs> Apparently in the bathroom. Yeah. You know. And after that, we're gonna go to Johnny in the basement. But before we do that, we're gonna take a little break. We'll be right back. And now these messages. Hey, welcome back to our hotline segment where we take your calls and your messages and we look at some emails and some snail mails, possibly, which we might have today. We shall see. Pretty big maybe. It's, you know, not on the table or anything for the audio Oh, listeners. there it is. There it is. Yeah, you could just see it right there. Yeah. Yeah, you can send your letters or whatever you want to Movie Dumpster at P.O. Box 918 Bangor, P.A. B-A-N-G-O-R. Pennsylvania 18013. Uh, we also do have another show exclusive to Patreon called Junk Mail, where we open packages and all kinds of other stuff. We will answer your letters in the main show, though. Right. But for packages and, and stuff like that, if you want to send us anything else besides, like if there's any artwork you want to send or whatever like that, we usually do that in the other show. So if that's something you're interested in, go check it out. It's only two bucks a month. And that hotline number is 740 688 DUMP or 3867. It's on screen. Uh, so yeah, call us at 740-688-3867 and leave us your voicemail. And we're going to be taking them right now. So uh, let's say we do it. Let's hear them. Joe, Sean, what's happening? It's your boy Adam. Uh, I just recently finished the Evil Dead Rise commentary track. Tremendous work. You guys definitely kicked it up, and I'd say 
Initial viewing was maybe a five of the movie. I'm not going to lie. Your commentary definitely brought me up to about a nine, which is outstanding. And I have a couple of tidbits of info here regarding what I happen to think uh, the movie ties back to. As you guys have probably hit on, uh, I would say it's much more Poltergeist 3 and Demons 2 than it is anything in the Deadite realm, but it was enjoyable nonetheless. Uh, and last quick little bit of info to piggyback on the episode you guys had with the very famous Tony from Hack the Movies regarding Elm Street 5. You said something about Super Freddy that you were a little uncertain of, of the actor somewhere else. You've seen him, something. That guy, Michael Bailey Smith, was the body double in the first opening scene of that movie, the sex scene where Dan and Alice are getting busy, and you see all the muscles on the dude's back, and he looks like the Hulk. That's Michael Bailey Smith. And to top that off, he was in the unreleased Fantastic Four movie, that you guys actually did a review for at one point, uh, he played Ben Grimm pre-transformation. So he played the thing before he became the thing. But the trick of it is, this dude is a giant and was legit taller than the actor in the costume after he became the thing. So picture that. The guy transforms into this rock monster and gets fucking shorter. Amazing. You guys are the best. Love it all. Uh, can't wait for more content as always MDU forever thank you so much Adam uh, thanks for calling again I believe Adam uh, got the hot sauces yes okay the voice was very yeah, familiar yeah. and and he, he finished it off there with a little MDU forever and that always stays with me uh, we gotta make that a t-shirt Adam you're putting <laughs> the idea in my head I can picture it already MDU forever uh, yeah uh, yeah that Evil Dead commentary track oh yeah yeah uh, that you can go check out on Patreon uh, Evil Dead Ri- uh, Evil Dead Rise by the way yes the Evil Dead Rise commentary track at first when he said a five I was like okay yeah no sure and then he was like, out, out of 10, I was like, oh, okay, okay, yeah. yeah. We made it a 9. For him, yes. For him. That's uh, pretty incredible. Thank I, you, Adam. I like that movie, yeah. but I guess if you want to punch it up a little, yeah. whether you're a fan or not, you know, check that commentary track. Hang out with the Dumpster Boys and have yourself a little Evil Dead Rise uh, party. Maybe. Yeah. Good. yeah. Trivia kind of interesting. <laughs> that kind of is crazy to hear. The sex scene from Freddy uh, 5. Yeah. Uh, okay. Which is <laughs> funny, because like I, I remember, because we were talking about Super Freddy, and I mm. couldn't remember his name. It was Michael, uh, clearly Michael Bailey Smith and not only is he Ben Grimm before he turns into the thing in the Fantastic Four the Roger Corman's Fantastic Four that we talked about but he's also one of the hitmen in Master of Disguise really I'm almost positive right when they right when they uh go to catch Dana Carvey when he's doing the Quint impression on the boat he's one he's like the one of the best parts of the movie well yeah the best yeah and he's got the pony he's ponytail man yeah Oh, is that what it was from? Because when we did that episode with Tony, we are like, what the hell is Mr. Ponytail Man from? Well, Mr. Ponytail Man is from Jingle All the Way. Oh, right. Okay, yeah. We're going back to that conversation. Yeah. Right. We and did, yeah. thank you, Sinbad, for that joke that I use when people have ponytails. When men have ponytails. <laughs> oh, Mr. Ponytail, ponytail Man. Man. So if you want to hear about all that Freddy Krueger nonsense uh, with us and uh, Tony, head over to the Hack the Movies channel and uh, watch that episode. But uh, thanks again, Adam, for sending in your voicemail. Thank you so much, Adam. Let's go to the next one. Hey guys, over at Movie Dumpster, this is Noah from Morgan. I just wanted to give y'all a little chuckle. Uh, I originally discovered you guys from Tony's from Hack the Movies, and don't get me wrong, I love him, but for some reason I've, I've noticed myself watching uh, y'all's show more than his. By all means, you could pass it along to him if you want to mess with him a little bit. But anyway, man, I'm enjoying the uh, Problem Child 2 episode very much, and I hope you guys have a great summer. Awesome, Noah. Thanks so much, man. Uh, glad you're enjoying the show. Uh, we won't tell Tony if you don't. <laughs> He'll find out eventually. He always finds out. He always His ears are always out. ringing. <laughs> They're turning beat red. He's like, "What? who's talking about me this time? This is playing right now. He just spit his drink all over his computer is what happened. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. honestly, possibility. Yeah. Uh, the hack offs are out in full effect these last <laughs> few uh, episodes, and uh, we, we're happy to have them. <laughs> Thanks, Noah. Glad you enjoyed the Problem Child 2 episode, and uh, we're having a pretty good summer, so we hope you are, too. Yes. I mean, it's winding down at this point, so I yeah. guess we kind of had a good summer, but yeah. yeah. All right, we'll take our last voicemail, and then uh, we'll jump over to some uh, snail mail, I think. Sounds good to me. 
Hey, what's going on, Movie Dumpster? Johnny Miller calling here. Just wanted to say thank you guys for all of the hard work that you guys put into the show. Uh, it's been awesome to watch. It's been awesome to listen to. It's been great to see the show just keep growing and growing and get better and better and better with every episode. I just finished up watching The Boneyard for the first time. Kind of pissed off. I never knew about that movie beforehand until you guys uh, did the episode on it. So uh, shout out to you guys putting the spotlight on all these really cool movies that I never saw or just never got around to seeing. And a big shout out to putting the spotlight on those movies that I saw that I loved that nobody else loved, like The Punisher and Robot Jocks and uh, Orca. So thanks for the validation that those aren't terrible. Now I know I'm not the only one. Bad Highlander joke, I'm out. Thanks, guys. Looking forward to the next episode. Thanks a lot, Johnny. Oh, Johnny Miller, dude. Yes. Thanks for calling in, man. Uh, I, I will say, Johnny, you're a lot calmer than I was expecting. You're always typing in those <laughs> capitals, all capitals. A little bit more relaxed on the phone there. He's a he's a reserved guy, man. Yeah, yeah. You know, he's he's been he's been with us for a long oh, time. Yeah. So that was that was very cool. To, thanks for calling in, dude. We really appreciate that. Uh, and and that is a slew of episodes for sure. Boneyard, we say Orca. Yeah. Oh my God, what a lineup right there! Uh, so good, and I'm surprised it took you that long to get to the Boneyard episode. He must have been listening to my my portion of the review. He's like, if Sean doesn't like it, I, I'm just waiting a few years. Oh, dude, you're crazy. That's going to be a watch along soon, and we're going to prove you wrong. We're going to all the dumpster dwellers out there. We're going to prove you wrong. Uh, that I mean, movie's I'd, good. I'd have to re-listen to it, but I I think my major complaint was the acting. So I don't know how much that's going to improve. I but remember okay. you did not like that movie. No. <laughs> don't hate it. Got a lot of good material for the uh, movie dumpster universe out of it, so there's a love there in that respect, you... much like Frankenstein Unbound. Can't stand the movie, but there's a lot of love towards it. <laughs> That's where Ali Oates came from. Well, from the Boneyard, yes, right? Yeah, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, he also mentioned Punisher too, which was an right. awesome. another another great episode. One of our, I think that's one of our best that uh, we did with David Defoe, and yes. so that was a, that was a lot of fun. <laughs> and, and with the orc connections and everything. Sleepy Frank Castle came out uh, of that. Has that fucking RC car with the <laughs> liquor on there? Oh my god. Uh, yeah, an all timer. If you haven't seen that movie, uh, definitely track it down because it's uh, kind of. Uh, a forgotten gem, I would argue. Can you commit a sin against a bottle of whiskey or what? Listen to our episode. We talk about it. A peanut there. butter and jelly sandwich. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we do have a uh, letter. A honest oh, yeah. to goodness letter. From Ghostface. From Ghostface. Oh, no. What's your favorite letterhead font? Railway. Do they use that for letterhead? Wrong answer. Right. Uh, it's actually from Keith Fields. And then that... you get stabbed with a, a letter opener? Yeah. I, I don't know. That was a horrible scream joke, but go on. Uh, I can see that like in Scary Movie, but yeah, maybe not in Scream. Yeah. Uh, Keith Fields, actually. Is the, the, his P.O. box is on the letter, so I'm not going to show the front. And they say, uh, included is a drawing by my wife, Jessica, for you guys. Oh. Sh something she has drawn for years. Hope you enjoy. The Bean Man. Excellent. Keith. The the Bean Man. Let me make sure there's not more to this letter, because I feel like I just read the last sentence. Well, yes, I yeah, did. Yeah. <laughs> you spoiled sorry, the sorry, surprise. <laughs> All right, I didn't realize I read the back. All right, okay. that's the sneak preview. <laughs> All right. That, wait, that's how you do it, right? You got to put the stinger first, or else nobody watches the rest. Wow, well, we're already pretty deep into the videos, so yeah. we already fucked up. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, second try. Hey, dudes. Joe, Sean. Yo. <laughs> is that the Ziggy response? That is the Ziggy response. Okay. Hey, dudes. Joe and Sean, I hope this letter finds you well. I've been watching you guys for about two years now, and it's been awesome seeing you grow. You've put out banger after banger. Uh, I'm excited to see what you do next and how far your channel goes. I'm going to get a little personal here. Uh, oh, that's nice. Sean, my dude, you are hilarious. Well, good for you. He is a very funny Take man. Take work and get it. There's a reason so, why. Thank you. I, there's a reason why uh, I've written with this man and we've stayed friends and did True. and have kept doing projects together. Uh, it goes both ways, my friend. Yes. Uh, but let's continue on on this this wonderful letter that Kate's written. <laughs> see how that whole dynamic changed. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, I see that. Sean, my dude, you are hilarious. Read it again. <laughs> Uh, I feel you are the torchbearer for the MDU, which I'll just comment on that before we continue. Just you, very you're a, briefly. You're not allowed to take the torch for everything on that. Well, that's why I'm going to. Okay. Okay. All right. I, Connor. He is. I got to give it to Connor. Uh, if you're a newer fan, you might not be as familiar with Connor. Yes. Uh, you got to go a little in the, into the archive because uh, Connor left the show right before 
we went into video, but we yeah. had those four years where he was on. He, I mean, you you were there too. You were, you two were needle in that shit. We all we all kind of part partook in it, but it was Connor who 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 was Came like up with slamming it right on the table, and then it just took off. That was in the Frankenstein Unbound episode. Yes, yes, and episode then, uh, season one, episode ten. I want to say I'm it, pretty sure. Very close or in the pocket yeah. there, but yeah, I, I I definitely took the ball and ran with it. We both took it and ran with it, but we I, all took it and ran with it. I definitely have tried on some level, whether intentionally or. Something subconsciously or not i'm not really sure uh maybe maybe in connor's honor on some level kind of just keep 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 it going keep it going plus it has become such an integral part to the madness that is this show it's Uh, so i'm glad that you're you appreciate it it's a huge facet to the show yes i think that's what makes us stand out i would agree i mean not only just our personalities but i feel like the mdu is a very unique thing to this show yes because it's it's one thing to say everything's connected but how is it connected yes he continues uh, your comments interjected throughout an episode have led to many a tear-filled laughing fit. Uh, I really appreciate your eagerness to watch new things without prejudice and give your honest thoughts. Uh, that's an admirable quality. Keep being you. Not at what he said, but I said that weird. That's why I did the head twitch for, for the viewers. <laughs> it's an admirable uh, You could read this part. This is directed at you, Joe. Oh, Here's that's your little oh, section. I have a part. Yes. I have a part. He didn't just say, I'll write one for This Sean. is my script. Sure <laughs> yeah, fuck, fuck that guy, Joe. Yeah, fuck you, him. You get the t-shirt. He doesn't do shit. Joe, your love for these movies and all the show encompasses is absolutely infectious. Thank you. Uh, I find you to be a really positive, inspiring guy. I'll be straight up because... You have to, in my case, I was pretty hardcore drug addict. I'm sorry to hear that, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've been sober one year, eight months now. Congratulations. Uh, that's a that's a great accomplishment, man. About the same amount of time I've been watching Serendipitous, maybe. So, wow, that's that's crazy. I, I, yeah, now that you're I'm processing it. Yeah. yeah. I don't mean to lay a bunch of heavy shit on you. But I want you to know you guys have helped people through some serious hard times. You should be told that and be proud of it. Well, that's really sweet. And um, we're really glad that we could do that for you, uh, especially on your journey to getting sober. So, And we're so happy that you Seriously. have kicked that, man. Whatever, whatever that may be. Um, we're very proud of you. And <laughs> the, the fact that we can lend uh, our... Inane comedy and 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 yeah. takes on movies and that helps you out. That's that means uh, the world to us. It, the entire MD movie dumpster universe. Yeah, I mean, I I can't really say much more to that. I agree with the sentiment. It's yeah. that thing where I feel like we've talked about this before, more so on the mailbag uh, yeah. show on Patreon. But uh, it's kind of humbling on some level to hear that, but also just. It's kind of like we do this show to entertain, but also because it's just like we like to do it. So if it also brings you some comfort on top of just all that, that's like an extra like a cherry on top. I don't mean to say that to like uh, undercut it, but it, it is kind of like a cherry on top that it was able to help you out. Because like that's not even something we were thinking about when we started doing this. And it's just like it does make us feel good. I mean, I don't know. Am I, am I saying that right? You know, yeah, my word no, I'm saying no, right? I mean, I, I feel like I, I'm always surprised when somebody reaches out to us because – we do get them kind of often, you know, and especially with all the shit that's been happening in the world and all that stuff, you know, uh, sure. people need to escape. And the fact that we can be that escape for a lot of people is pretty fucking incredible. And right, every I guess, time yeah. I get a message like that or we get a message like that, it I I don't know what to say, really. Except, I, I guess except, that's why I'm a little verklempt. Yeah, but like like I, to, to, to influence somebody's life like that is such a big thing and like, I look at me and I'm like, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing in my <laughs> right. own life. Well, right. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So I, I, I think that's fantastic that I can help some, or we can help somebody else. Yeah. Uh, kind of navigate their thing. Yeah. You know? I feel the same way. Um, he continues. Anyway, I'll wrap this up. I can't wait to see where Movie Dumpster goes from here. The sky's the limit, I think. You dudes keep being yourselves and doing the amazing work you do. I hope you will one day be able to do this for a living if that's what you wish. Thank you. Uh, thank you guys for the years of entertainment, and I'm looking forward to years more. Dumpster Dweller for Life, Keith Fields. P.S. I am required to inform you I found your channel through the very famous Tony... F- Couldn't get away from it, motherfucker! Almost did. We were almost, almost we were this close. End. We were this close. It's okay, uh, Tony from Hack the Movies, the very famous Tony from Hack the Movies, yes. Uh, P.P.S. It's probably too long and maybe not something you would want to read on the show... 
call-in segment, but you have my permission if you wish. Thanks. Well, we already did. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. <laughs> Buried the lead there, Keith. It's okay. Sorry about that, but at least we had permission, so that's great, yes. and we didn't do the whole thing and release it and not... <laughs> well, we probably would have just deleted the segment when oh, we got well, to that part. That's true. That was the but case. that would be a shame because that yeah. was a really, really sweet letter, and, and we really appreciate it. Right. Uh, back to the spoilers. <laughs> Included is a drawing by my wife, Jessica, for oh, you yeah. guys. Something she has drawn for years. Hope you enjoy the Bean Man, Keith. Oh, that's the Bean Man. Okay. This is the Bean Man. Okay, okay. Mrs. Bean Man! You, you, you want to oh, do it? it Here. You, you've earned you've earned it. Okay, the ghost <laughs> Oh my god, it's the Bean Man! That is certainly the Bean Man! By his wife, uh, I'm covering the sun there. Oh, there you go, by, yeah. By, by the stoner sun. Yeah, hold it up uh, in front of your camera, too. Show show everybody. Bean Man. Bean Man, come together with your hand! I wanna hang out with Bean Man. Yeah, so do I, man. Is he a lentil? Wait, wait is a lentil a bean? Is he a kidney bean? Is he a jumping bean? He's, he being fava? Around, I don't He's know. a fava bean? He's been around. I love that. Let me see this. Re repeat my bad joke. <laughs> you know, we keep mentioning Tony. I'm thinking about water now. I can't. Water puns starting Look to fill this. my ears. It looks like me when I go to the beach. <laughs> Baby. Can't wait to hang this up. Thank you yeah, so much. Uh, thank you, Keith. Thank you, Jessica. We really appreciate Thank you, Bean Man. Yeah, thank Bean Man. Thank you so much. Um, that was really sweet. That means a lot to us. And... Um, and yeah, uh, we, we hope you keep enjoying the show, and, and uh, thank you. So thanks again, Keith, and to everybody who sent something in. But uh, Joe, didn't you used to have a mustache? Now back to Meet the Applegates. And now we're back with some more Applegates. Where do we go? To the Amazon. Oh, whew. yeah. Boy. It's so we're hot. back now. We're yeah, good. Yeah. We're, it's a little, I'm a little sweaty. A <laughs> little damp in the nether regions mm -hmm. there, yeah. you know? Yeah. Little, yes. A little, little moist in the bug bits. In the, my, 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 <laughs> my, 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 sweaty. <laughs> exactly. Sweaty in the dungeon. Swampy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, so we're getting, again, it's, it's kind of rapid fire because the way that this movie's structured, it's in like little vignettes mm -hmm. that the yes. family's going through. So, uh... Everybody's been moving their bodies down to the basement. Yes. So now Vince is down there, and the fucking Kenny and Kenny, Kevin and Kenny are down there, the twins. They're playing hide the body. And, and I didn't understand that they were still alive. Like No, I, I thought they were dead. Thought Same. They were all when dead. I was a kid, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's sort of confusing. To me. Yeah. Johnny lights up again. And he's getting real fucking. <laughs> he's high. also got like a whole pompadour now. He's wearing the whole. Oh yeah, outfit. he looks like a greaser now. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. you guys rise pure high. Yeah, and he smokes up his dog Spot, and he turns into a giant fucking flying beetle. And this is where I was talking about. He he, he, he goes gets, full no, stripe. I don't like it when people get their animals high. No, it's it's fucked up. Yeah, I was kind of watching like, all right, that's a little animal abuse here for a 1990 film, but okay, whatever. <laughs> he turns into a gremlin, dude, because he's just like gizmo cockaying all over yeah, the place. Yeah. Like, turns into a giant fly yeah. with a collar on. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, still got the bug collar on. <laughs> I love though. It's or like the dog collar on. Yeah. This fucking fly, this big ass fly, it's like high and shit. So now it's just acting like an actual fly hitting the window constantly <laughs> yeah. until it just revs up and plows through this thing. <laughs> At one point, uh, Greg Sam, uh, Glenn Shadisick's dog, like, kills it. <laughs> it doesn't kill it, we find oh, out. Oh, yeah. But it does grab it, and he brings it into Glenn Shaddock's ass. He's like, wow, that's the biggest bug I ever fucking saw. And it starts twitching, and Glenn Shaddock picks up a stool and smashes the shit out of it. Well, he takes the dog collar off, and maybe you were going to say the <laughs> yeah, same yeah. thing. But the dog's last name is also Applegate. Yeah. Like, who gives a last name to their dog? <laughs> Spot Applegate. Oh, this is this is the, the collar of Spot Applegate. Well, that's normal. Is that okay, um, right. Americans? Americans do that? <laughs> Put their it, name on, right? If right, it had a right. different last name, we're like, oh, well, well, obviously not the Applegate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's definitely not your dog. <laughs> but it, some other Spot. <laughs> at first, he's like convinced. I guess he never really does figure it out. Maybe at the end, he does. But. He's like, yeah, there's this bug ate your dog. Yeah, well, he goes over to Sally or <laughs> to the house. He's like, is your mom home? I found this giant bug and it, it, it ate your dog and somehow put the collar uh, on right, as yeah. he ate it. It ate it and then and the then collar <laughs> just kept going. <laughs> he just put it on. <laughs> um, she asks, and he questions her about Vince. Right, yeah. Um, he's like, why did you say he was gay? You went to Akron with that guy. And she's like, fuck off. And she like throws him out of the house. <laughs> Which, you know, put yourself in Glenn's shoes yeah. just for a second. Because you get that reaction for a second as the door's about to hit his face. He's like, oh, 
Well, he's it's like, yeah, you kind of want to have the same reaction. Your well, kid's he's... missing, and you get the door slammed in your face. And he's putting it all together now, and he's like, right, something, well, hap- yeah. something happened. The Apple Gates are harboring these giant bugs from the Amazon, and there's right. some kind of communist uh, <laughs> thing going so, on. Right. Some sort of plot to overthrow the government. Yeah, mm-hmm. or something. Mm-hmm. Satanism and giant bugs. While this is all going on, by the way, Aunt B is like trying to get there. Oh, man. And now is like hailing in like someone on a boat oh my god in the amazon or something he's got his leg out like trying to like hail this boat and he's like he's like <laughs> and the guy comes up and he's like hey you going to rio amigo yeah that's another the guy just line. guns it yeah 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 <laughs> then he, he he's like come here hector let me show you something yeah. he's like jump in the water and get that guy's attention he's like but there's piranhas in there they're only this big it's a little fish it's only yeah. this big get yeah. in there throws his ass in and immediately you see the bubbles and this guy yeah. disappears. I love how he's like, help, my baby's drowning. And then he's like, help. <laughs> well, the guy. My child. Yeah. The, the captain pulls up in the boat and he just immediately knocks this guy yeah. into the water that too. That gets eaten also, yeah. which is interesting because up until you just said that, I was yeah. thinking, okay, well, there's the dog, there's the larva. Yeah. No actual people get murdered, but mm-hmm. actually, yes. That man's dead. Yeah, no. That man that's they're, on that boat. Bones. They're, be- they're yeah. like this thing behind me. That man that's on that boat also plays Freddy when he's on fire. Mm-hmm. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Just, just the on fire part. Just the on fire okay. part. Yeah, yeah. He's like I a feel, stunt guy. I feel like there's that one guy who gets on fire for every day, <laughs> right? He's the best in the business. He's got his whole routine. The arm, yeah. the other arm, and then you fall <laughs> flat on your face, right? Roll around. Yep. Yeah. Perfect. And then you got Savini. He does the legs. And, and, and he'll have the giant head on, so yeah. his head's suddenly like three times bigger, oh, and he'll have the the, 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 the suit on under yeah. the suit. <laughs> So we're back. So, so again, everybody's fucking up and doing their thing. We're back at the nuclear power plant. I want to talk about this because it's funny. Mm-hmm. Uh, Finally, something funny. <laughs> Dick is <laughs> Dick is like getting all undressed. Like now he's now he's just in it to win it. Now he's yeah. just all blatantly right, yeah. fucking his secretary. Yeah. But they throw everything off the desk, and the public address system goes on. Oh, and they all and hear he, it. And and the and the guy who owns the the nuclear power plant or the big boss is like walking these people through. He's like, we run the highest, most best secure nuclear power plant. And all of a sudden, you hear Ed Bagley. He's like, all oh, right, the baloney pony, yeah. baby. <laughs> I'm going to stuff you like a Cornish game, and he says, they fucking run in this room. Slam it to me. (laughs) And like, they don't even have time to put their fucking shoes back on. They're like, yeah, uh, we heard it all. You're fucking fired. This is a nuclear power plant. This isn't like some fuck around job. (laughs) Get out of here. And they're like, oh, whoops. And like at this point, you find out that the wife has basically spent all their money and everything's gonna get repossessed. So he doesn't have a dollar to well, his he's name. He's like home early. This is where everything converges and just go. It just yeah. Into well, I was just gonna say because she's like, "Oh, you need to pay me off, or I'm gonna tell your wife." Yeah. He's like, so he "What co- about fifty bucks?" She's like, <laughs> "I think four digits." So he cocoons her ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he's home early. Right, so she gets cocooned. So now all, all of their they each have one. Now, now they all have skeletons in their clo- or townspeople in their closet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Dick's home. She finds out. Jane finds out that he's cheating on her. Then everybody Which is find, obvious. He's got lipstick. Well, he's got oh, yeah. lipstick all <laughs> over. All Slaps the shit out of him. And like mm. everybody finds out that everybody, except Vince Sampson, everybody finds out that everybody's harboring people there because uh, mom's making a big bunch of noise. The fucking, oh, the sheriff is in there because mom <laughs> has to take the sheriff because she robs a fucking liquor store. Right. The pay the yeah. Um, She's like, what's the problem, officer? She's got fucking like hundreds of dollars in cash wrong? and a shotgun sitting there. You've been drinking tonight? I had a cup of coffee. That's a good line. <laughs> yeah. yeah, a lot of good lines in this, yeah. actually. So everything's everything's totally fucked up. They lose they lose everything in the house. Uh, Johnny's a burnt at, a burnout. Sally's pregnant as shit. <laughs> so they're in the house. I'm laughing because I know what's about to happen. <laughs> they get a knock at the door. And it's great because Ed Bigley like jumps on the wall like a bug, like trying to blend in with the uh, bookshelf. The, the bookshelf, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's these guys from this news, uh, this magazine, Family Bizarre. Family, Family Bizarre. bizarre. Family yes. is bizarre for mm-hmm. sure. Yeah, not yeah. buzz, not bizarre. Oh, bizarre. Oh, pun. You think that might have been a pun? Uh, a little Family bit. Family yeah. Bizarre. They're on the damn cover oh. later. Family Bazaar. So uh, each year they run, which is a, a cross between Harper's Bazaar and Family Circle. Probably. Oh, oh. Family Circus. <laughs> Well, family <laughs> They're in there. They're in there. <laughs> yes, Bill Keen was going to draw them all. No. Sure was. I, I would. I would read that comic. Check no. it out. Mm. So these two guys come in, and apparently there is a. They run a contest for uh, the Family Bazaar magazine, 
and they've hit every statistical norm <laughs> on the nose. This family. This yeah. goes counter to every magazine contest because it doesn't increase any subscribers or no, anything for no. them. They, they just randomly pick a person who meets the statistics and gives <laughs> and give and give them a prize, a million dollars or whatever it was, half a million dollars, mm-hmm. an RV in a brand new three story dream home, and they get to be on the cover of Family Bazaar they, magazine. Yeah, they sure do. Mm-hmm. Which I'm like, okay, well, when's the other shoe gonna drop? Oh, hi, Johnny. As he walks Johnny in, comes stoned in. out of his mind. <laughs> Who are these puds? And he's like, uh, who's that? Oh, that's the gardener. <laughs> Sally like, walks in yeah, and, and she's, pr- she's like out to here, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. eating a fucking Butterfinger. And the guy's like, oh, if that's your daughter and she's as ripe as you think she is, the deal's off. Mm-hmm. For some reason, they start like getting into a pushing match. Clearly, yeah. this girl is pregnant and this bald guy is just like pushing this pregnant woman and eventually pushes her down was on the, the floor. Midnight on the well who was pushing? I pushing think so. Her? Yeah, so yeah. he pushes her down and what happened? And a giant <laughs> egg pops out of her vagina. And it's not like a... It's, a, it's, it's like a larva. larva. It's a, it's it's a, like a larva a egg. egg. If you ever saw... If you've ever seen like an ant carry like a lot of the larva to like a new location that's what it looks like yep and it's like jiggling like fucking it's Bill a hybrid. Cosby's jello yeah 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 that um, she should not be thrilled about apparently for no. her family <laughs> it seems like that they probably made it out of gelatin probably I mean, they could have they had great business as yeah. it was rolling <laughs> down the uh, off uh, rolling out of her and going down towards these these journalists these weird journalists who want to get into a fight after, <laughs> after 10 seconds after trying to give them a prize with a teenage girl yeah. here's my question mm. listen if you fucking saw this you if you're not shocked by this, you have something wrong with you. It's clearly but, not natural. No. I'm going to be more like, holy shit, what just happened? Maybe like, what is that? Holy crap, that's disgusting. I'm not going to be like, huh, that just shot out of that woman's vagina. I'm going to step on it now. Oh, dude, he stomps it out. It spray- shit sprays everywhere, like all over Sally's face and stuff. Uh, it's gross. Yeah, this was this was. I felt like they thought this was their gross out scene. That this and was it was. That everybody was going to talk about. It kind of was, yeah. <laughs> That was the mortal uh, failure on their part. Oh, well, again, I thought they were dead. I thought you would sure. think they would be. Yeah. So, so Dick and Jane they turn into the bug people, and, and this is like, like it's the best really awesome because like Ed Bagley's head like stretches out and the face pops oh. out, and uh, the the extra legs like shoot out of uh, Soccer Channing's yeah, and, ass. And doesn't Soccer Channing have like skin over yeah. the over her bug face? Yeah. At some point, oh, yeah. it's all stretching out. Yeah, yeah. There, there's some interesting trans morphing. It's really there. cool. Yeah, but you think that they just like eat them or kill them. I, right. You would think. No, but they don't. They storm in the attic <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then they take a, a camping trip. Right. Because they're like, oh, man, we can't take this anymore. Well, Ampy ain't going to be here for a while. Yeah. Meanwhile, ampy has been calling them constantly and they're just yeah. not getting the yeah, call. because the... I thought they were running away, but then they just could come back. Well, yeah. they missed the call because their phone line got shut off. Yes. But yeah, you're right. It feels like that. Yeah. Instead, the gag is, oh, they leave in the RV. Oh, Ampy arrives in these yeah. military fatigues with an AK-47. <laughs> well, they're ready to blow up a nuclear power yeah. plant. So we, we see her, them fully transform, Aunt B fully transformed from being in drag to just being like Chuck Norris. Oh, yes. Kind of, yeah. Well, because Over the course of time. Because he, he does switch into like he that, keeps that upgrading his suit. Look. He switches into the suit, and that's a funny it's a bedazzled too, suit because they keep putting dresses up, and he's like, "Hate it, I hate it." Now this, I hate. Yeah, yeah. and then he, <laughs> then he like takes his wig off, and he he's like, "Yeah, looking good." So they go, they go uh, connect with nature, and like kind of they have a slice of life moment. Yeah, <laughs> they're um, hanging out in now, bug form in, now in the campground. What's funny about this on the tape? This whole scene has subtitles. Oh, bug really? subtitles. Really? Yeah. How are they saying? Um, I think they're playing tag and it's like you're it or whatever. And if I, if I remember correctly, cause I didn't watch, I didn't just watch this one. I watched the one that was sure. on YouTube, uh, but they weren't there. That's weird. So I thought that was kind of weird. I don't remember the subtitle, so I don't think I saw the yeah. tape version. Well, you, cause you saw the Apple Gates. You got to watch meet the Apple Gates. Oh, yes. Or other right. way around. I'm sorry. Or you have to watch the Apple Gates, not meet the Apple Gates. Right. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Different cut. So they're a family. Again, everything's fine. They head back and Ampy's, Johnny's not a stoner anymore. Ampy's waiting for him. <laughs> It's like you had a mission and you fucked it up, mister. So the whole plan now is to take out the nuclear power plant, but the Apple Gates are now cocooned in their own house. Mm-hmm. Well, because they're like, where's the blueprints? Where's this? Where's that? He's like, yeah, I'm, we're kind of working on it still. Which is weird because like we know how to do it anyway. So we're just going to tunnel to the nuclear power plant and make it happen. Why don't you 
do it. Yeah. Mm. What was all that for then? Like, what was the ruse for? You yeah. could have literally moved in and just did it. Yeah. Uh, well, when they do go in, they just start killing people. Like, yeah. it's like, okay, yeah, I guess you could do that. Well, the Applegates don't have a choice. They have to, like, yell out the window for Vince Sampson or, or uh, Greg Sampson to come up. They find, oh, yeah. his, they find Vince and they find out that the Applegates are bugs. Right. And that they've kept them all captive there. And they have this town hall meeting where they're going to like lynch them in the middle of the fucking town hall. But there's also where we get the reveal. Where the, where, where the uh, um, ra ra racial allegories yes. wear so oh, thin yeah. on this whole situation. Yeah. How we feel about others from other places and uh, people who come to our country or move into our neighborhoods and all of that kind of wears real thin. You're a bug lover. Yeah. Bug that. lover. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and they also have, like, the only person at first that's defending them is the black sheriff. Everyone else is ready to hang them. Let's Literally. Out, yeah. Well, they have a nukes on Ed Bagley before yeah, he gives his little speech. Yeah. yeah. And he basically says, like, you know, uh, if you think we're bad, like, look at you. You're, like, poisoning your own pe families and stuff like that. Poisoning like your own families. What is it with Ed Bagley's mouth? He's always fighting his mouth. Like, I think he has a slight thing? lisp, too. He has, oh, maybe. maybe. he has a speech impediment that he's overcoming by the way that he talks very deliberately. Oh, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, like to your point, Joe, basically talking about, hey, you hate bugs as much as we hate humans. Like, think about it that way. And we don't and have to. And we need to like live together right. and like just live in harmony and treat the earth better, which is like that ecological message. Too. Also, by the way, uh, our uh, allies, I guess, whatever we want to call them, are attacking your power plant. That's going to, you know, kind of destroy this entire town. Maybe we need to focus on that. Yeah. So they, they like the lights go out. Because now the oh, nuclear yeah. power plant is about to explode. So uh, the sheriff, like, gets him out of there and takes him to the plant. And uh, there's, like, a you know, Dick's all heroic. He turns into his bug form. There's, like, and he goes to face off against Aunt B. And, like, they're, like, spitting shit all over the ground at each other. Right. There's just a big puddle of slime like a Nickelodeon show <laughs> in the middle of the floor that they're both sliding around on. And they're just, like, trying to wrap it up, dude. Well, Aunt B slips and breaks his ass or her ass, whatever's ass. Their ass. Their and, ass. And, mm -hmm. uh... Ed Bagley just pushes this fucking like computer yes. on top of him and, and smashes, smashes him. This gigantic mainframe, like giant, you know, seventies computer just falls on top of, <laughs> like something from Danger Mouse just falls on top of him and Mr. Him. Mr. Radar falls yeah. on top of him. Oh yeah, exactly. <laughs> Bring it back. And, and then and then uh, he's dead. That's not you know that's not he's something squished. you would come back no. from. And Dick is able to like shut down the nuclear power plant so it doesn't explode. Well, he prays to make sure it works. Oh, he's a praying Cocorata. Cocorata, yeah. yeah. So he's like, please work. Yeah. He does, and it works. And then, he, and then it works. And everything's fine. <laughs> everything's fine, because we're everyone back in. everyone likes him. Everyone likes them now. They're suddenly. all good bugs, you know? They're like, you know, you keep them around. They're good bugs. They eat the other bugs. They save the town after trying to destroy the town. Well, they kind of save it, because we get this final scene back in Brazil, where Glenn Shaddix, the sheriff, and uh, Opal, Opal go to visit him. Why these three, by the way? Eh, they're the main human characters. I guess they no, are. But no one cares about Opal. It could have not been Opal. I don't know. It was Vince Samson. Coming she went visit. with them because she's trying to get away from like debtors that keep trying to get her for all yeah. that credit card debt. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. The creditors, yeah. Uh, but there's a really funny gag, a dark gag, but a funny gag, uh, where then they meet the Applegates and their bullshit. Oh, and TM. Yeah, there you go, exactly. And they're like, yeah, so I guess everything worked out. Well, a little radiation leaked, and they all take their hats off and all their hair's mm -hmm. thinning. It's like, ooh. Yeah, they're all balding. <laughs> but they, they now the Applegates are like... They're heroes. Well, yeah, but they've started their own coalition called right. Blow. <laughs> right, yeah. To save the rainforest. Yeah. And I guess now that people are aware that the... Cocoradas are a species and an intelligent species that also look like humans that are also on the cover of Family Bazaar. Yeah, they somehow get to be on the cover of the magazine anyway so, after all of this. So they know about them. Yeah. Do you know how fast the the U.S. government would go and eradicate <laughs> the, those, those bugs? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, but they're heroes now. <laughs> yeah. And they, 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 again, still put them on the cover of the magazine. Mm -hmm. They got, they're growing, they, they're growing. They're birthing of, eggs. Now they're right. the most unusual family in America, but yeah. then they're not in America anymore. They're down in South America again. But they were never, I mean, technically they're the America does. Yeah, I, I, a lot of that, like I said, it kind of falls weird. apart at the end there. I yeah. feel like it's one of those movies like where they had an ending and then someone said, well, let's have a more ending. And then someone else said, yeah, yeah, but let's have one more ending, right? Because it kind of feels like that. 
It could have just ended with like one last scene after they saved the power plant of them like in the town cheering or whatever. Done. Yeah. If if anything. I mean, I don't mind this ending, but I, mean, I, I agree with you. They went full. I mean, they were like, well, we're already doing satire. Let's just do it. And that's sure. what they do uh, at the end. But like, yeah, but... but like, and they went so far as to put makeup on everybody for so they're like balding and stuff. Yeah. And it's just like, and even Sally has her boyfriend slash new hubby, her new drone. Yeah. So she's yeah. Not, she decided not to be a lesbian. Right. I guess. Yeah. Gave up on that. Jane, she's going to be the new queen. Oh, no. Gonna, Jane's the new Jane's queen. Jane's the new queen, yeah. and I guess she's going to be the other queen. Probably. And then- Which uh, also we didn't talk about, but there's that weird shit with her and B, where it's like, I always thought you could be a great queen. And yeah, it's like, great, great queen what does potential. that mean? Mm-hmm. We still don't know how this fucking bug society I, works. No, I don't think they thought about it. <laughs> I don't know, but you know what I've been thinking about for like five minutes? What? What? You think the Unabomber had like that- uh, you know, magazine on the wall. You know, he was a big environmentalist. Mm, oh, Family he... Family Bazaar magazine. He loved dogs. the Apple Gates, you mm. think? I think he did. Maybe. So, you know, I didn't even realize, like, I for whatever reason, until this last time watching it, I didn't even realize, oh, wait, that is the magazine they were supposed to be on. Yeah. yeah. This is the magazine Family Bazaar. The bugs are on it. And it's painted in, like, a Norman Rockwell yeah. sort of style. Yeah. And then they're the most unusual family in America, and they're celebrated now. And then it cuts to Aunt B, who's somehow alive. Now, in a full body cast in a wheelchair. This is the this is the first time I've ever seen this scene. Watching this movie, it's not on the VHS. It is not on the VHS. Really? How does it end on the VHS? It cuts to the jungle, and that's it. Oh, the jungle scene and the jungle scene, and then it ends. So did someone think maybe we got a sequel in this? Oh, this is going to be great. <laughs> well, you know, after we're going to put Dabney Coleman in a fucking wheelchair, and he's going to be going on about like he's got like a, a Madagascar hissing cockroach on his hand. Yeah, and it doesn't want to be on him at all. No, right. So you only see it for like a split second yeah. before it probably just hides in his coat somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> And, and then he, like, complains while the credits are going like, over him. He's like, yeah, Rodney. And he's just ad-libbing. Yeah. yeah. He's like, we're going to we're gonna take out NATO. What is that, a turd on the ground? I'm starving. You want to yeah. eat it or something? And then a homeless person comes and goes, get a job, weirdo, or whatever. <laughs> it's says. really fucking weird. And it's just him in the wheelchair. And it might not even really be Dabney Coleman. It might just be <laughs> right. Dabney Coleman oh. doing a voiceover. <laughs> Probably. Probably. But his guy in a full body cast in a motorized wheelchair with the hissing cockroach on his on his broken arm going off into the on the ra- train tracks into the distance. The sunset of the broken city of Berlin. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> to, where yeah, where is this place? I don't know. It's supposed to be it's not like Ohio. Uh, it's somewhere they're in definitely Ohio. not in Ohio. That's where they're from, I think. Yeah. I know, but that de- it's I, definitely that not in Ohio. Does not look like Ohio. Uh, no. I just don't know why it's like Italy somewhere. It, on some level, it's kind of funny to see this like character in the body cast, but also it's like you don't need it. It's like, all right, for a movie that has like touchy subjects like rape, weird dark humor, uh, just silly ass shit, a, a stoner son, uh, incest, not incest. Whoa, <laughs> what movie? And affairs. An affair is what I was trying to say. <laughs> yes. Went to the wrong word. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, they decide that. Well, it's a little too dark. If this guy's squished, we gotta like make sure that the audience knows they're alive. Oh yeah. You know that's what I guess that's where I'm going with they're that. They're not murderers. If, what? Maybe. But they kind of. Wait, yes. But Aunt B, did, Aunt B is clearly throwing people in with the piranhas. Aunt, Aunt B definitely killed a few people yeah. in that nuclear power and plant with that AK forty seven. Definitely. Oh, it's also the thing of you were saying before, Lobo, where it's like this movie has like three endings, and they were like, you know what, we're fucking chopping that one off for home video, yeah, baby. Like Return of the King. Yeah. <laughs> I always love like Night of the Creeps where it's just like it's like they just keep they got one more beat. Yeah. yeah, it's like oh then the spaceship comes <laughs> back to the cemetery and starts looking around. It's like I love it. I love it. I I, I love it. They just they just kind of you know it just keeps the gag going. Yeah, it's like this nesting doll of endings where it's just <laughs> yeah I love it. Where are we putting this, fellas? Where are we putting it? Where is it? Or is it in the dumpster or is it on the shelf? <sighs> That's so cut and dry. Yeah, mm. I mean, you, 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 there we, are you there. Know, are, they're not bad movies. Just this misunderstood. It's true. You know? Cinema Insomnia. We on Cinema Insomnia. We don't. We, you know, it's hard to, to kind of make those. Uh, I gotta. I'm gonna have to watch what you guys. Okay. Do. <laughs> you want me to go first then instead? <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's dumpster. Um, really easy. Come on. Uh, listen, really? I like this movie, but it is not very good. 
the effects are kind of the shining star in this. And I do like a lot of the comedy elements of, I mean, there's a comedy. I don't know why I'm wording it that way. Like it is sure. funny. Don't sure. get me wrong. I just think some of the, uh, the jokes don't like hold up. I know we talked about it already, but some of the things that they are in there, like Lobo was talking about where it's in there to show that ugly side of America, but even still kind of like, kind of takes away from it for me a little bit. Also, just like not every joke lands, but I think overall it's a really good time. Like I was laughing my ass off watching this. It was fun seeing these actors in these situations, especially when they start to go crazy with the bug stuff later on in the movie. Because I could just imagine how that was on set, just the way that they they played these parts. With it's probably just an incredible time. Uh, definitely one I wish I could get on DVD or or get a Blu-ray and make out just a couple more of those uh, scenes a little better. Not, not that anything's too dark or anything like that, but because I'm watching on a little bit grainy YouTube, I didn't have the VHS, uh, and that's your only damn option as of this recording. I think the best quality of it right at the moment is a laser disc rip. If that's you, I, crazy. Which, which might be on YouTube. That's what that is. Uh, so with all that said, when I'm saying dumpster on this one, it is, you know, top of the dumpster or maybe like a half a foot deep. It's not deep in Sounds there, Sounds like man. you're walking it back, brother. I'm not... I, did I ever say this is at the bottom? Did I ever say this is a POS? No. That, 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 I just didn't love it. It's it's fine. Uh, it may be next to the recyclables. Oh, it could be. It could yeah. be. It could be for you. But it's definitely dumpster for me. Again, dumpster doesn't instantly mean I don't ever want to watch yeah. it again for any of the uninitiated. It's just... I know it's not good. I still like it. I got problems with it, but not, I'll watch it but again. not on the shelf. <laughs> no, not on the shelf. Uh, this is definitely on the shelf for me. Um, you know, I don't... I, look... I don't want people to be like, well, Joe, it's on the shelf because Joe grew up with it or whatever. That's why he likes uh, Garbage Pail Kids or whatever. Yes and no. Uh, I didn't understand what this movie was when I was a kid. Mm. I rented this movie to watch people turn into giant fucking bugs, and it was really cool. And that's why I liked it. Sure. Growing up and then watching it again as a teenager, I understood all of the satire. And the jokes that were happening, because I didn't really, you know, you don't get what's exactly going on then. Revisiting it now for the show and actually talking about it in a real capacity, um, I think it's a weird, brilliant film. <laughs> There's nothing like this movie um, in terms of, like, what it's trying to do and how it executes it. It's, again, it's this weird, like Lobo had said before, it's this weird thing with, like, the fallout of like the 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 Reagan ideals and like mm. that perfect like fifties family or whatever, and totally turning it on its head and exposing um all of our disgusting vices and things we do as a society and as a species, which is kind of fun to explore, and the way that it's juxtaposed against giant bugs <laughs> that is, are figuring it out is fun. Yeah, they're kind of fumbling their way through yeah. it is kind of fun and how they become susceptible susceptible to it. So it's it's funny that way. I think I think the comedy's really funny in this. It's a dark it's a dark comedy. Some of it's super low hanging fruit and low mm. brow. I don't know. I'm a big Monty Python fan, so seeing Dabney Coleman in a dress, not that it's funny that uh, the uh, it's yeah. not a trans thing. It's just it's funny to see Dabney Coleman in a dress. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's funny to see that guy yeah. in particular. That's what I'm talking because about. He always played a certain type, right? And for for him to have that much of a, a, a sense of humor about yeah. himself, and he was comfortable and, with and it, to be comfortable yeah. and to not play it super sticky. Yeah, right. And and and, and I thought I thought was very brave for. him him honestly yeah. and he plays it like a gruff like himself yeah like no. like, like straight not he, even blinking he's like yeah you got a problem with that yeah, like like yeah. that's the he joke doesn't change how yeah. he behaves because exactly. of what he's wearing yeah it, it wouldn't work if it was hammy mm -hmm. yeah. right yeah you could take it off and it'd be the same performance is my point mm -hmm. um i don't know it it, it it like it it's and it also like skates just above that like I mean, I think it crosses the line in a couple, a couple uncomfortable levels, and even that weird thing too. We mentioned, we didn't mention it before, but like when Sally gets the bug smash, like there's a weird, like little abortion thing running through there too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, it's a half breed. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, well, and Ed Begley Jr. talks about getting rid of it. Yeah, yep. all that yeah, yeah. Thing. So that's so like a we're taking on a lot of touchy subjects, a lot of of things that are still controversial today. Yeah, gender issues are yes. controversial. Uh, abortions controversial. Mm -hmm. These are not. This movie did not 
uh, w- w- was not fearful in just, just diving headfirst into a lot of uncomfortable subjects using these bug uh, creatures as yes. the vehicle. As the scapegoat, kind yeah. of, really. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and like you can look at this movie and be like, oh, it's that stupid movie with the fucking giant bugs. Is what is dumb. But like, maybe like, obviously. You've also said you also said this before. You watched it twice before we did the show, and you noticed things the second time that you didn't notice the first time and that you enjoyed it more the second time. Is that correct? Uh, yes, absolutely. I actually have seen this movie a few times. Yeah. And the first time I saw it, it was kind of like a fever dream where I was, I was a little bit younger. I wasn't, I wasn't a baby. In a I cradle. wasn't a baby in a cradle. But, but, but I was, <laughs> in a mahogany I, I, cradle. I was seven. I, I, I didn't quite grasp what it was presenting. Right. And then I saw it again a little bit later. Uh, and appreciated it more as a cult movie, but I always kind of found it somewhat uneven. Yeah. And then I watched it again when I thought I was going to be on your show a month ago. <laughs> it's taken a while, but you're here. And yeah, I, yeah. And I watched it again then, and I realized, wow, there is some more layers to this. There is some more things that I didn't quite understand. I think I'm kind of getting the vibe of it more. Yeah. And now I have watched it. Uh, this is maybe like the fourth or fifth time that I've seen this movie now. Mm-hmm. And I appreciate it even more than I appreciated it before that. So each time I think I've appreciated the movie more, which again is the earmark of the cult film. Yeah. Mm. Where, 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 uh, and I think in, uh, with a lot of movies, if you watch something in different stages of your life and if it's a well made movie, it will say different things to you. You will pick up on different aspects of it. This one specifically, like I, I went on that journey. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And again, you might say, well, oh, this guy's talking about the Apple Gates. And it's like, well, yeah, but like if you really go back and examine it, you can pick all that stuff out. You know what I mean? And like to that point, like this is literally my first viewing of this film. So maybe on a second viewing, my opinion might change. I might like it more. I might like it less. But Dude, on that initial viewing, it's you know, a lot to take. Stand. It's yeah, a lot to yeah. take in when you first see it the sure. first time. I didn't even understand that all those people came back to life. I was totally <laughs> right. confused yeah. the first time. Yeah. Wait a second. Where did they come from? Um, yeah. And then yeah. the same thing with like, the, I didn't understand that they were on the magazine. So yeah. there was a lot of really obvious things because I was so put off balance by, I was looking over here while this thing was happening. The sleight of hand. Yeah. So. So I, I I feel like uh, that this movie is. And did you did you say did you finish saying whether it was on the shelf or on the um, dumpster? Because I feel like I'm I'm pulling. No, you're good. No, 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 no. This just just to end my thought. It's on the shelf uh, of for sure. And I think it's a crime that this isn't on DVD or even Blu-ray at this point. Um, I think it needs a Blu-ray for sure. And I think I think we need to talk about this movie and get a little bit deeper of what the fuck was actually going on like behind the making of this and, and how it c- kind of came to be. It would be great to get interviews with these folks. It would be great to talk to Denise Denovi. It would be great, it'd be great. Talk to Ed Bagley Jr. Ed Bagley Jr. I'd love to talk uh, to. And, and I, because I, I feel like there are some motivations in this movie. If you think about a movie like Heather's, yeah. um, mm-hmm. there's some deep societal issues that are being, that, that they're taking taking on in that uh and then if you look at a movie like beetlejuice even that's a very satirical movie you know and, about and death yeah about oh, yeah. death and about how we think about death and and just sort of how uh um you know the the normal people are the problem yes. and similar to this yeah you know uh, you know you need an exorcist to get rid of people because they're annoying they're going to move into your house and they're going to be pretentious and they're going to you know uh, uh destroy your home and you know so there's a lot yeah. of aspects to the um uh um uh the, the deetses yeah that are very unpleasant mm. Um, that, from being like uh, uh, city folk coming out to the country, yeah, not yeah. Only that's rich, definitely part of it. Rich city folk, pretentious right. city, pretentious artists. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So they they definitely, I think, you know, looking at at those movies and then looking at this, mm. you know, you can see that that um, I, I I I feel like they needed, you know, Beetlejuice has a really fun hook yeah. to it. Uh, Heather's is a little maybe too dark. Yeah, the mainstream. Yeah, enjoy. sure. Because there's no flamboyancy of a ghost yeah. man or like giant bugs. You know? That's also a movie, unless you kind of know or you just watch it, you don't realize what you're getting into until about 20 minutes into sure. it. And I kind of feel like with this, 
I feel like they needed to lead with bug people more. Yeah. Yes. Like, you know, because I always joke about the movie Horror Express. I don't know if you ever. Yeah, heard yeah, of that yeah, movie. yeah, yeah. If someone said the alien? alien on a train, yeah. <laughs> I would be like, Alien on a train? Sign, Sign me, me up. up. Right? Yeah. But because it was Horror Express, I'm like, and it's, you know, okay, all right. I imagine a lot of people talking on this train. What is, okay, it's Peter Cushing, and I like Peter like, Cushing and Christopher Lee, but I'm going to wait before I see it. But if someone said, Peter Cushing and Christopher Lee, but there's an alien on the train. I think I would have really run out and saw that sooner. And I think with the Apple Gates, mm -hmm. if someone really sold like the bug transformations and the bug aspect of it more in some way or made it more fun, I think I think a lot of people would have grabbed onto it. I think so too. Um, but am I supposed to now say whether it's on the, uh, on yeah. the shelf? Or where, where, where is it? Um, you know, again, I I, I, I I sort of agree with both of you, uh, you fine lads, on, <laughs> on, on, the, on the points that you've made. I mean, the movie it, it, it is somewhat uneven and it is somewhat uh, uh, cringy. Um, but on the other hand, I kind of feel like it's uneven and cringy on purpose. Yeah, sure. that's what I mean. It's in, intentional. In, in what it's trying to display. Yeah. So um, I'm I'm going to I'm going to have to say that that this is this is this is a true cult film. This is again we 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 we, we laid down the groundwork of a cult film. Watching it over and over again, we're proselytizing it right now. We need that Blu-ray to yeah. come out. Yeah. Uh, and and of course, intellectually obsessing over it, what we've been <laughs> I, doing. Yes. For like what two hours? Yeah. Just about. Yeah. <laughs> Just about. <laughs> so I'm I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna put this in the dumpster. Okay. Because it would want to be in the dumpster. Oh, it would want, yeah, it wants that rancid cabbage. It wants, sure, that rancid it wants a cow pie. Cabbage, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, this movie wants to be in that dumpster, yeah. but with pride. Yes. It, 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 for, because being on the dumpster for the Applegates is like being on the shelf for everyone else. Yeah. I think that's I think that's pretty uh, that's good. That's a good way to look at it. And it's kind of the point of the whole show of movie dumpsters. So True. it's very apropos. So, Mr. Lobo, thank you yes. so much for for joining us. Uh, thank you. It's thank, only been thank both of you boys. It's only been five hours you know, for, since we started this episode. You know, I, I appreciate you getting me out of the house. You know, showing an old man a good time. <laughs> I appreciate. I appreciate that. You're very welcome. Mm -hmm. What is it that you do, and where can everybody find you? Um, I'm a. Uh, I guess I'm best known as a horror movie host. Yes. Mm. Uh, I, I'm the n number three living horror host on Google. That's pretty incredible. <laughs> That's, That's pretty cool. incredible. We got leg a legendary status so right if here. You, if you look up uh, top horror movie host and then subtract all the dead people, uh, I've come up pretty high on the list. Uh, but no, I I, uh, I I grew up watching creature features with Bob Wilkins, and he was my mentor. And uh, I started a show called Cinema Insomnia in 2001. Uh, we started on an ABC affiliate. We went into syndication. Uh, you know, in 2006, we had, had a footprint of 45 million homes with Cinema Insomnia. I've been in some horror movies. I was in the Plan 9 remake. Mm -hmm. uh, I worked on The Ranger for Shudder. I did, I'm the, I'm the an, uh, announcer voice for the Fangoria Chainsaw Awards. Oh, yeah. Sure were. Uh, and uh, I, I still do my show, uh, Cinema Insomnia. I do three live streams a week on the Cinema Insomnia Twitch channel. Uh, and I also, um, I have a Roku channel called OSI 74, which is like a UHF station from a parallel universe. And there's a lot of weird programming from a lot of weird people. It's you great. Get great shows like the movie dumpster. On there. <laughs> but there's a lot of weird stuff from a lot of weird people, including a, about 130 episodes of Cinema Insomnia. And I uh, just recently have gotten back into broadcast television. That's incredible. Hmm. Where uh, a public television station in Michigan said, hey, we want to get you on over here and, uh, uh, and show them what a real horror host does. And I'm like, who hurt you? Someone <laughs> hurt you? Who? What? So this was like out of spite. They put me on the air over there. I'm like, and they're like, well, we can, we can buy your Blu-rays and I'm just going to program you and put you on. And I said, you know what? Instead of buying your Blu-rays, I'm going to see if we can get approved by public television and get, and we can put them up on the website and you can just download our shows like you would download the Farm Report or, you know, whatever it is, the, the city council meeting or whatever, yeah, okay. else, yeah, whatever yeah. other things you're downloading. You can just get it the same way and we don't have to come in through the back door. And, <laughs> and, you hold the screen door open, yeah, please. Yeah, yeah. So we, we put it up on the on the uh, PEG site, which is not about pegging, by the way. OK. That's a different website. It's about peg warmers, though. Yeah, it's, it, that's, that's a Kevin about, Jones that's thing. That's a different thing also. Okay. Yes. No, this is about public television, educational and government broadcasting. And also includes college TV stations gotcha. and things like that. So they all get their programming from that place. And like we've only been on there for 
couple of months and we've got 37 stations now. Wow. We're on in Philly as of September 7th. Awesome. We are on in on Philly Cam. So we're I'm, I get to be the local horror host. Hell yeah. That's incredible, man. So I don't know if that's a good description of what I do, but I'd like to say they're not bad movies, just misunderstood. We have a feature film with a lot of comedy and uh, skits and uh, vintage commercials mm-hmm. and interviews with, with, with people. And Joe has been on the show. We haven't got Sean on yet. We not yet. Sean on an episode. Yes. But Joe has been on uh, as characters and as himself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And hopefully more, it'll be much more fun to be had. So yeah, if you want some more Movie Dumpster content, you can head over to patreon.com slash movie dumpster um, where you can get an ad-free audio version of the show and support the show for as little as $2 a month. Bargain. And if you're watching on YouTube, please like the video and share it with your friends. And uh, if you're listening on your favorite podcast app, please leave us that five-star review and uh, you know get some more people in the dumpster. Like I said earlier, we got to grow this dumpster community. Spread that love around. Oh, yeah. And if uh, you want to keep up with what the Dumpster Boys are doing, you can head over to moviedumpsterpodcast.com. We got a brand new website. We got a brand new store. We got an events page. You can see what we got com- coming up, what we got cooking, what we're going, what's going on. Uh, and you can follow us at Movie Dumpster on all your favorite social medias, whatever they might be uh, now. <laughs> I'm not sure exactly. <laughs> they keep changing. There's all kinds, you know? Just, just love it. Smoosh it. <laughs> And I just want to say how important the two of you are to the horror community. I really appreciate what you do. I think you guys are uh, one of the best of the business. And thank you so much for having me on. Oh my <sighs> gosh, what's happening? Get away from, get away from me. Oh gosh, you're, oh, no wonder you put it on the shelf. You're gross. Ah, oh God, oh, no, please stop, stop. Ah, get me out of here. So that's it. That's Meet the Applegates from 1990, directed by Michael Lehman. I'm Joel Escola. I'm Sean O'Rourke. And I'm Mr. Lobo. Thanks for visiting the dumpster.